Hi guys. So basically, this is a story about a house I lived in a year ago near my IT campus in the west of Ireland, which I believe was haunted. To begin, before living there, I was always pretty skeptical of haunted houses, and for good reason. As a teenager, we would often visit haunted houses in our locality, which never really proved to be so, at least while we were present there. A few days after moving into our new college house for our final year of college, me and my friends went out to do shopping and get food. Upon arriving back, we noticed someone had left the oven on. We each denied it, but we knew someone had to have left it on. Looking back, this was probably the first unexplained incident as thinking about it. Nobody had even put food in the oven. Over the following few weeks, we started to notice odd things happening. Creaks, groans and movements from the side of our eyes. At this point, two of the housemates were convinced of a haunting. However, myself and another were still not convinced. It was soon only me that was left unconvinced, as one day, while the other non-believer was home doing study, they looked up to see a face peering at them before vanishing. It finally clicked for me when I woke up one night, just before Christmas, to see a very large man, or what I believed to be a man, staring at me from my wardrobe. Then things started to get really strange. Boot prints started to appear on the ceiling, making tracks across the roof by the year's end. One of my friend's girlfriends swore she saw him upstairs in the room when he'd been downstairs with me all along. Our shower, for which there were three switches needed to turn it on, would come on in the middle of the night, and one room off the kitchen would send shivers down our spines any time we went in there. There was one night in particular which really scared me. I always locked my door before going to bed and distinctly remember doing this that night. When I awoke in the night, I could see the large man again, this time at the end of my bed. I shut my eyes, telling myself it was a dream and went back to sleep. The next morning, my door was wide open. So were all the doors in my wardrobe, and the guys had told me it sounded like I was dragging my school bag from one end of the room to the other all night. So this has happened twice. I suffer from anxiety and get really bad adrenaline dumps. So that paired with hypochondria, I'm almost always feeling weird. It's been like this since I was nine and I'm 36 now, so I've gotten used to talking myself down. Unfortunately, when something really messed up, I tend to either ignore it, or if it's too bad, pop a clonopin or two and ride it out. About eight years ago, I did that. I was feeling super dizzy and kind of sick, but during a panic attack, I always felt super dizzy and kind of sick. So I just did the thing and laid down with a movie on. About 10 minutes later, I smelled my grandpa. My grandpa had a very distinctive smell, like sandalwood and something else that was just him. And I heard him say, turn off the stove. Like, in my head? He had passed like three months or so before, so I thought maybe it was from a sweater of his. But you don't ignore your grandpa, dead or not. So I checked the stove, the gas was on. I lived with two smokers, turned it off, aired the house out. The second time wasn't very long ago, maybe a month or so. I'm diabetic but not insulin dependent, but my sugar still tends to run high, so I don't generally worry about it getting too low. And again, the whole anxiety thing. Anyways, I wasn't feeling very good, so went to bed kind of early, and had a dream where I was in the house I grew up in. The entire house was dark, and I was standing in the dining room, watching the kitchen, which was bright and a bunch of people were wandering about, which was pretty normal as our house was kind of the family hub and where everyone went when they needed a place to go. My stepdad and my aunt were sitting in their usual places. My aunt eating pizza, she loved pizza like Ninja Turtles level loved. And I wanted to go into the kitchen so bad. Because I mean like, holy crap, that's home. My aunt gestured to a pizza box and I was just about to walk in when my stepdad looked over and was like, poke your finger. My arm looked kind of sad and then I woke up, went to check my blood sugar and it was like 50, which isn't deadly, but it's pretty damn low when you run like 130 most of the time.
It all started when I was 12 years old. I can't remember how it came to this, but one day, me and a couple of my younger friends were walking out from our block of flats, and I saw something with a corner of my eye. I don't know what it was. It was standing in the corner. It was tall, and though I only saw it for a brief second, I experienced literal existential fear and pushed myself and my buddies outside as quickly as possible, them not understanding what just happened. We discussed the situation a little, speculated about what was up, but it still wasn't a big thing. We just went on with our day, doing whatever kids are usually doing. It would be fine if it ended with that, but it didn't. After that, the three of us started seeing things. All right, maybe two of us, because the other one is a known liar. And I'm not here to tell lies. And I know for sure some of you will consider me a liar. It wasn't anything clear, but you would just walk home in the evening and suddenly see someone dark and tall standing behind a tree. You knew something was there and it was watching you, but you would think that maybe your mind is messing with you. Soon enough, it went surreal. All I can say is we were all became pretty paranoid, feeling like being watched all the time. But naturally, being kids, we also became really curious. That's when we became hunting this stuff. And I'm not kidding, we called ourselves hunters because we would walk all over our area late in the evening, inspecting every dark corner, seeking out the paranormal. I know for sure that most of the experiences were just scared kids' imagination especially considering the fact we would bring in someone new who didn't experience this stuff previously in order to scare them. This was a kind of bait for whatever haunted us because we hoped it was drawn to fear. But two encounters stand out as very real. Stuff like I saw it standing next to my bed when I woke up at night for a couple of seconds and it pushed my back when we were on a hunt but when I turned around no one was there and even it started loudly chanting something in my ear, even though nobody was there. Won't be included, although it happened. I can't remember most of the smaller stuff anyways. For God's sake, I'm 20 now. The first one occurred when I got us two walkie-talkies, so we could split into two teams and inspect the area more efficiently. Oh yeah, look at those little shits thinking they're SCP Foundation stuff. This time, however, we were hanging out in our yard and playing with only one of them. The other one was right there with us, turned off. That's when someone else appeared on our us unusual frequency. We heard strange noises and I started repeatedly asking who was the third one on the line. For some time it was dead silent, but then someone finally said, they're calling for you. Nothing more, silence. This is pretty scary on its own. The strange things is, in five minutes, all three of us were called home almost simultaneously. Me and one guy got calls from our parents. The other one was approached by his father directly. And that's when we got paranoid over one more thing. Maybe our parents are under the influence of what we thought to be a demon as well. I know we probably were overthinking and it was just a coincidence, but come on. When you're scared, you can't really think straight. The second one was worse to say the least. This time, there were two of us, and I swear to God I would think I'm hallucinating if I was on my own. We were heading to our usual place of hunting, a dark street between a block of flats. Please mind that I'm from Ukraine, and it's not some fancy building, but a Soviet nine-story panel one, wildly overgrown with trees, and an old semi-abandoned factory. It's not clear if it's in use or not, but once in an eternity, we could see its pipe steaming though everything around it is covered in metal scrap and trash. Our casual talk was interrupted when I suddenly stopped to stare into the bushes. My friend joined me, and now we both stared at something we couldn't exactly understand. It was something white floating at around three meters height. Not see-through like a ghost, but solid white. It almost seemed like we were hypnotized because I don't remember any thoughts coming through my head. I wasn't trying to process what I saw, just looking. And then it frowned. I don't even know how to describe how exactly it frowned while having no distinct features. It felt like its skin, if you can even call it that, wrinkled in a way to express anger. It took us a couple more seconds of stupor before I woke up from it, punched my friend in the shoulder 
and we ran somewhere people could see us as quickly as we could. Nobody was around though, so the best option was to say somewhere someone would possibly notice us from a window. I was quietly hysterically laughing from all the adrenaline. I felt like I finally saw something unimaginable and we almost just died at the same time. Thinks about it now though, this thing would probably end us if it could or wanted. And I know it will sound unbelievable, but we went back. Yeah, yeah, nobody would do that. That's bullshit, all this stuff. I was just curious if it had a body. Here's the thing. It was so dark, I couldn't distinguish anything below its supposed head. So we grabbed some rocks and sticks and went back. It was still there. Though a little bit closer to the path we were standing on this time. It wasn't moving, just like us for a moment, because it was freaking terrifying to do what was planned. We didn't know what we were dealing with. We were just impulsive, stupid kids. But we still threw whatever we grabbed at him, barely reaching the bushes at all. It still reacted by stretching its damn neck, skin tightening on its tendons or whatever they're called, and it felt like there were way more of them than it should be. At this point, our fright reached its peak, and we finally ran away. The demonical nonsense went on for some time, a couple of years I'd say, but at some point everything just ended. I don't know how, I don't know why. Maybe because we got older and we were not as sensitive to the paranormal stuff, or because we were getting more and more brave, bringing kitchen knives and crosses and all that stuff to try and protect ourselves. But maybe this thing just got bored of us and went on. I know that I saw it. Maybe almost everything that we thought happened was just our imagination. But those two instances were real as heck. I would die to know what that thing was and what it wanted from us. It made a couple of years of my life feel like an absolute mess. It would be nice to sort those memories out, to understand the hell we were dealing with, because sometimes it feels like I'm just an idiot who can't get over the games we played as kids. With nobody con to consult with, I prefer not to mention this part of my life to anyone, because I know it sounds like fiction. Sometimes I hope I see this tall bastard again, just so I know he's real. I also should tell you my parents built the house my experience happened in. So no one died there. But the village I live in got burned down in the past and witches got burned. Also, there's a vortex slash pause in the bathroom mirrors facing each other. What I'm about to tell you happened 16 years ago when I was 10, but I still remember everything crystal clear as if it just had happened. As I said, I was 10 and always had the feeling of being watched and followed in the dark. Well, it was a bit more specific, but I'll talk about it again soon. I always calmed myself by telling me it would be nothing. Every kid is scared of something silly like that, right? At least I thought. Even though I didn't like the dark, I wouldn't say I was scared. I rather proved myself wrong by facing whatever thought it is making me uncomfortable. So again, when there was a dark area around me or if the lights were completely off, I often had very specific thoughts that tried to scare me. Like something is in there watching me reading my book or something just waits till it's dark to grab me and scratch my arm right here. Like it was very specific. What would happen in the dark, you know? When I was a kid, I loved documentary movies, so I knew about survival instincts and stuff. That's when I would tell myself to calm down. It's natural to be scared of the dark because we can't see. It's nothing there. To prove it to me, I would do exactly what my instincts told me not to do. Most likely nothing happened, as I told myself, but the next day, I had scratches and blue marks on my body where my instincts told me it would be if it was dark. I ignored it. I think I just didn't want it to be anything since it would mean there really is something. That was just to explain the background a bit. Let's talk about the night that changed my life. As I went to bed, I again had this feeling. This is a really, really bad feeling. It was way stronger than before. Something told me to not switch the light off. To explain, I was already in bed. I just had to reach out to hit the light switch. But before I could turn it off, I freezed and just 
couldn't do it. My thoughts weren't specific this time. I just had this huge fear of doing it and it was just like, you'll regret it. It took me a few minutes to convince myself I was childish and just should do it. Eventually, I turned it off. It was dark around me, like really dark. I had those glow in the dark stars on my wall, but I couldn't even see them. It was just pitch black. Again, this huge fear overcame me and I slept deeper under my blanket. Everything just felt off. That's when I heard it. A very creepy breathing right behind me in the room. I was facing the wall, eyes wide open. Again, I freezed. I was too scared to turn around or move myself. Jeez, I was even too scared to breathe myself. I just hoped it wouldn't notice me. I can try to describe the breathing sound. It was almost as it would growl in a very, very, very deep tone every time it breathed out. While breathing in, it sounded like it was kind of buzzing at the same time. I can't tell how long I was just laying there, listening to the sound of its breathing. It felt like forever. But considering I didn't breathe the whole time, it can't be that long. Suddenly, I heard the sound of something being moved through the air. How do I explain? Do you know the sound when you take your ruler and just move it in the air real quick? It almost sounds like the wind in the trees, but different. Maybe you know what I mean. After I heard that sound, something hit my face. Well, more like brushed over it. I had long black hair back then, and I felt it being moved forward with the force of it. And then silence. All I could hear was my own heartbeats. I still couldn't move. Not because I was paralyzed or something. It was more like I didn't want to move because I didn't know if it still was there and if it would attack me if it found me. I think it was pretty aware of me being there the whole time, but back then I didn't know that. Everything would have been possible, you know? When my body forced me to breathe again, I was freaked out by the sound of my own breath at first. I thought it would be back. It took me a while to figure it was just me and everything else was still silent, but I still just lay there listening. This time, I can't tell how long it took me, but I didn't move until I noticed my stars on my wall growing again. I reached out and turned the lights back on. I was shaking so badly. I remember how I couldn't hit the switch at first because I kept missing it because of this damn shaking. With the lights back on, I realized this really happened because it was proof right there in front of me. I had a teddy bear on my writing pulled on the other side of the room. Now remember the sound of something moving in the air and how something slid over my face? Well, there he was, my teddy bear laying between me and the wall his eyes facing directly towards mine. Something threw him at me. I'm still living in the same house and I'm convinced whatever it was is still here. Over the years, I figured there are several ghosts in this house and most of them are friendly. But there also is the really evil entity. Well, I'm not sure if it's just this one or even more. Most of the time it's in my old childhood bedroom, so I avoid going up there. My family and I tried to get rid of it several times but every time there was something that crushed our plans. And so it's still there. This is not at all the scariest thing I encountered, but it was the first one that made me realize that there are paranormal things and I kind of grew up with them. My story starts off a couple months before I was born. My mother told me that my dad was into demons and thought that doing a ritual on my mother and myself would make us luckier. I don't know much about what was used except skulls, candles and a wired liquid my dad put on my mother's stomach. Nothing much happened after that with my family except when I was two years old, I was crying and pointing at a corner as my family asked what was wrong. Growing up with my little brother, that's not regular behavior for a two year old. All I can remember about that was a big spider with the face of an old white man. I addressed the color because my dad didn't really like white people all that much. This memory is a weird one because I remember it through a different person's perspective. Fast forward a few years and I'm around five or six and my entire family, even people I don't talk to, 
Now we're at my grandparents' house for about seven hours. And me as a kid, I wasn't paying much attention and just playing around until my grandma told us all to gather around the table. She was just talking about how she and all the women in the family were having dreams about losing something important like money or family. In all their dreams, it would be an old white man who's taking it from them. At the time, I didn't care because I was bored. But the thing I remembered so clearly was my grandma saying that her family was cursed. When I was seven years old, I moved into a new house and I've had the worst experiences in my life at this house. One of them was when I was sleeping on my couch and I woke up and I couldn't breathe for a good couple minutes. And I was just there screaming for help. Another one where I seen a pair of shoes in my house that were too big to fit anyone, but I was a kid and didn't care. But as I was sleeping and I woke up at around 7.30, I saw an outline of a man looking at me. And the last one when I see a headless thing run into my sister's room. Four years later, we moved into our last house and this house wasn't the scariest or the worst. Just a lot of stuff happened there. The third month, my grandma died, which broke my family apart like bad. About a year in the house, I had a weird experience with my brother and it was summer and around 3 a.m. And I was laying down when I heard sounds coming from my brother's 19 years old bed. And when I look at his bed, I seen him looking down at something. And when I looked down at what he was looking at, I saw him sleeping that scared me. So I just went to sleep. I told him what happened and he just said he had a bad dream. I have some more, but I think that's for another time. But when I was 12, I had sleep paralysis and I seen that spider with the man's face. And I also seen my grandma, but nothing about her was her. And she just had a big smile on her face, but it didn't look human. I also saw people I didn't recognize as well, but they looked the same as well. I always joked about dad doing voodoo, but he confirmed it a couple of months ago. And a day after he told me that I watched a video of someone having sleep paralysis and seeing that spider with a man's face. I've always wanted to share this story. At the time it happened, I did tell my flatmates, but I left out certain details, not wanting to seem like a weirdo to them. I've had a handful of strange experiences throughout my life, but most have been far more subtle than what I'm about to tell you. This happened sometime between 2012 to 2014. I would have been in my late 20s at the time, living in a shared house in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. I worked nights packing shelves at a supermarket, a job I absolutely hated but had kept all through uni. In fact, I'd actually graduated in early 2012 but found I was too lazy to just quit. I ended up spending those last few years in the share house kicking around, working this crappy dead-end job, waiting for everyone to go their separate ways so my life could start. After each shift, I'd catch the bus home from work at around 11pm get off at the top of the hill at the shops, then walk down the hill towards home. It was only about a 10 minute walk home from the bus stop and I only mention all these details because I probably caught that bus and made that same walk a thousand times in all the years I held that job. This was the only time anything even remotely creepy happened. I topped off the bus and was headed downhill with the cemetery on my left and a row of simple one and two story homes on my right. I almost never saw any people at this time of night, that's how quiet the area was. The road is also well lit, and despite a cemetery looming over your shoulder, there's nothing eerie about it. In fact, it's quite a beautiful, well-tended cemetery, filled with interesting old markers, statues and things. You'd see people jogging or walking through it most days. The cemetery is bordered by a sandstone wall that follows the way downhill, then left along this coastal road that sort of loops back around. I was maybe halfway down the hill when a plain white van drove past on my left. At first, I thought nothing of it. I didn't break pace and the van didn't stop or slow as it went past. I watched the tail lights go small, sweeping left as it looked, took to the bend at the bottom of the hill. But as soon as it disappeared, I had this very odd feeling come over me that I was going to see it again. 
I'm not sure how else to describe that. It wasn't like a voice in my head or anything, just an odd fleeting impression that when I got to the bottom of the hill, the same white van would be waiting for me. So I got to the bottom, turned left, and saw a pair of headlights coming back towards me. They were too far to see if it was the same car, but immediately I knew it was. I didn't feel scared or anything, but I knew then that whatever was about to happen was going to happen, whether I wanted it to or not. Again, just a fleeting impression. This time, the van slowed and came to a stop at the side of the road. There was a young guy driving. I can't remember whether the passenger side window was already open or whether he leaned over to open it. But either way, he leaned across and called to me to come over. All I thought in that moment was, he probably needs directions. But as I approached, I immediately began to feel very uneasy. The gentle impression I'd felt earlier, watching the van drive past, now solidified into a vague feeling of dread. I felt as if I shouldn't get too close, so I came about as far as the grassy verge and then stopped. I remember the radio in the car was playing, just some random pop song. He might have reached over and turned it down, I can't remember. I also don't remember too much of what he looked like, to be honest, except that he was maybe about my age or a little older, had longish blonde hair and a few days of growth on his face. He didn't strike me as threatening, so the unease I felt was more confusing at first. He spoke with a British accent, so I just assumed he was a traveller. Excuse me, he said. Can you help me? I'm trying to get to the cemetery. Do you know where I can find the cemetery? I was really confused. Just over his shoulder, on his right, less than 20 feet away, the tops of grave markers and crypts poked above the sandstone wall. Like I said, the way was well lit and he would have definitely seen the cemetery as he drove this road a moment before. In fact, he'd driven down to the far end of it, then made a U-turn, and that's when I'd seen him coming back. At the other end, where the road loops around the coast, the wall wasn't high, and you could clearly see all the graves, even in the dark, stretching back up the hill. It made no sense. I was just about to answer, when my blood absolutely ran cold. I froze mid-word, my mouth hanging open. Somewhere in the back of a van, I could clearly hear a woman screaming, crying for help. I could even hear her banging against the inside panelling. I heard it clear as day over the radio playing. I knew it wasn't a recording, but it was also somehow strange and seemed slightly unreal to me. Again, not too sure how to explain it. I definitely heard it, and it scared the hell out of me but I didn't react the way I thought I would. I looked at him, and he just stared back and said nothing, making no effort to explain the screams, or even acknowledged we were hearing them. But there was no mistaking it. I could still hear it clearly as we started to stare at each other. Sorry, I have no idea, was all I could get out. He nodded, said thanks anyway, and drove off. I ran the rest of the way home, which thankfully was only two minutes away. When I got in, I was out of breath and shaking. My flatmates were all asleep and I went straight to my room. If there had been even 1% of doubt in my mind, like maybe I'd imagined it, I would have probably woken someone first and at least told them what happened. Instead, I called the police. I had to explain the story to two different cops. Long story short, because of a jurisdictional thing. My area actually fell under a police station further away than the local one I'd called. They took it seriously, took all my details and said they'd send a car to look for this van. Unfortunately, I hadn't seen the license plate number. In the moment, I hadn't even thought to check, stupidly. And my description of the driver wasn't much more detailed than what I've described here now. Though they had my details, the police never called back to follow up, and nothing showed up in the news or any newspapers. When I told my flatmates about it, I left out the strange feelings of dread and just stuck to the details. They mostly thought I'd been pranked somehow. And while I guess that's possible, to this day, I know that not what happened. It's one of those had to be there things, but the whole thing felt so unusual and didn't play out like any kind of prank. The whole thing lasted not even three minutes from when we first drove past 
to when he drove off. And this reaction lasted probably even 20 seconds. But it stayed with me for years, and I often think about it, wondering what happened. I thought about it a lot over the years, and my gut tells me that there was something else going on. What I mean by this is, I don't actually believe there was anyone screaming for help in the back of the van that night, but I 100% swear on my life that what I heard was a woman screaming and crying for help, and that it was coming from back to the van. I actually don't think the driver could hear it either, but what that means, I really don't know. Anyways, that's my story. Like I said, I've got a few others, but this one is the most dramatic and I suspect it will stay with me the rest of my life. So, I go to a relatively old college, built in the 1800s, and there's a bunch of stories of it being haunted, but I don't really buy into it that much. I've been here a couple of years already and haven't seen anything too weird. Minus what I'm about to say, which is possibly the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. My roommate is never here. She always just stays at home and commutes to school for classes, which means I basically live alone in my dorm. As an introvert, I couldn't be happier. After dinner, I usually just go back to my room, lock the door and work on homework. So a few nights ago, I was at my desk working on my paper in the dark and listening to music on my phone. All of a sudden, the music stopped and my laptop switched off on its own. Neither the computer nor my phone would turn back on, like something had just disabled all the electricity in the room. At that point, I just kind of accepted my fate and decided that would be a good stopping point for homework. It was probably after midnight anyway, and the next day was a Saturday, so I didn't need to use my phone to set an alarm. I decided I'd probably just go to bed and let both devices charge. Less than a minute after everything shut off, there was a knock at my door. I remember walking to the door and going to look through the peephole. But after that, I remember nothing. I woke up in my bed the next morning on top of the sheets, which I never do, and I didn't even remember going to bed. On top of that, when I checked the door, it was unlocked. I never leave it unlocked, even when I'm in the room. I'll check the door three times an hour out of paranoia, just to make sure I didn't forget to lock it. I've even turned around halfway to class to see if I remember to lock the door. I figured it must have been my roommate who came to the room that night, and I was just so tired I don't remember. So I texted her to tell her she'd forgotten to lock the door last night, but she responded by saying that she was never at the apartment. I thought she was lying or something, but then she FaceTimed me. She was in a completely different state. The only two people I would have opened the door for were her and campus security, and I have no idea why security would have been at my door past midnight, especially since I was making zero noise, and no one else has a key, so I would have had to have been the one to unlock the door. Nothing in my apartment was out of place or missing. I finally assumed that I must have dreamed the whole thing, and that I'd somehow unlocked the door in my sleep. My phone and laptop were working fine, after all, and showed no signs of damage. A couple of days later, though, I started telling my friend in class what had happened. And as soon as I mentioned that my electronics stopped working, some other girl that I didn't even know butted in and asked, was there a knock on your door after? The girl proceeded to match my story almost exactly. She was alone in her room, all the electricity shut off, there was a knock on her door. She went to check through the peephole, and she remembers nothing after that. Her only difference is that she woke up on the floor next to her bed and not on top of her bed. She says she also knows someone that this happened to, but she won't tell me who. I'm just thinking that if there's three of us, this may have happened to a lot more people that we don't know about. Has anyone experienced anything similar? Is there anything I should do about this? I don't think campus security would do anything about it since nothing was stolen. I wasn't hurt or anything, and there aren't even any cameras in the building. Great security plan, I know. They barely even do anything about actual crime, so I'm pretty sure I'd get laughed at if I said anything. What was this, and what do I do? My best friend died in 2017. I still don't know if it was suicide or an overdose, but yeah, he left our world when he was 18 years old, but it felt like he never left my side. 
His presence was almost more intense than when he was alive, especially in my dreams. I won't go into details, but thanks to him, I found my passion again. After his death, my dreams changed drastically. The location in my dreams was always the same, a very abstract but peaceful place. Sometimes I was alone, sometimes he was with me, and sometimes there were many beings. We were both beings too, genderless, pure and almost childlike. We both met when we were 14 and 15 years old, so I don't know much about his childhood. The theme of my dreams was always adventurous. I felt love, sadness, anger, happiness, fear, and all these feelings in the most intense way. I was one with everything. I really wish I could explain my dreams better. I wish I could show you all what I saw in these dreams and what they taught me, but I just can't find the words for it, not even in my native language. As I mentioned before, I found my passion for art again. He loved my artistic side. He even told me shortly before he died that he really wanted to see me creating art, that he would buy me a piano. That was a joke, but in a loving way. I really wanted to learn the piano at the time. He visited me in my dreams for about one or two years and it suddenly stopped. I never dreamed of that place or beings again. My dreams were never the same again. And I think my cat did the same. My cat also died suddenly in 2021. His death was too painful to bear. I felt like I was about to go crazy. I wanted to die with him. He didn't visit me that often in my dreams, but one dream struck with me. He told me over and over again that I need to stay alive, that I'm strong, that I have to fight. His voice was almost like an angel. It sounded neither masculine nor feminine. He looked me intensely in the eyes while he spoke to me, and since then, I truly believe that he was our angel all along. He protected me from myself. He showed me what it means to be strong, in his lifetime and in my dreams. He taught me to be kind to myself and to others. He taught us what it means to be a family. A few months after his death, our whole house smelled like him. It was such a strong smell, as if he was right next to us. My family had these experiences too. Dreams, his scent and his presence. I don't know if I'm just imagining things, but even if it was just in my imagination, it helped me. I found my purpose, and as much as I want to die, as weak as I feel sometimes, I feel blessed for these experiences. It puts a smile on my face when I read my dream diary. So when I was little, the very first house I lived in as a baby was this old 18th century townhouse that my parents rented from the local doctor. Suffice to say, that place was super haunted. It's a story for another day, but three years ago, they finally sealed the upper floors off entirely, and the doctor told my mum that nobody will ever set foot up there again. The bottom floor is now the GP office and waiting room. Now, all of this aside, Growing up in that environment left me with a major sensitivity to spirits that's kind of still active sometimes. I'm 25 now. But when I was a kid, I terrified my entire extended family with the things I would come out with at random. Anyway, one of the more popular stories my parents tell at barbecues and parties, and just to anyone who will listen, happened when I was two, and mum wanted to pop in to visit her grandfather's grave. Her family are from a village about 20 minutes drive away, and there are two graveyards, the new one and the old one. My grandfather is buried in the old one in the old family plot. This graveyard has since been locked, and you have to get a key from the priest to get in. So, being two, I wasn't overly interested in sitting down by a graveside to pray with my parents, and they were happy enough to let me wander, so long I stayed in their sight. And luckily for them, I didn't go far. I bottled down the path, and stopped about halfway back among the tombstones, where I started to sort of sway on the spot and dance as much as a two-year-old is capable of. My parents watched me for a few minutes, but didn't think much of it, and then told me we were leaving. My dad picked me up, and we headed for the gate, but just before we left, I turned over his shoulder, looked around, and smiled and weighed at something. They obviously didn't really think it was anything to be concerned about, because a week later they went back, my grandfather had died the day before their wedding four years earlier, and mum had been very close to him, so they visited fairly often. This time, when we went in, I didn't even wait for permission and ran back down to the same graveside, 
where I began swaying on the spot again, looking up over the grave of the air as if something was suspended there. It's probably worth describing the grave, but there isn't much to describe. It was a very small patch of earth that didn't even have a border, fairly overgrown and with a totally rusted small iron cross at the head of it. There was no nameplates, no indication of who was buried there, and it clearly wasn't a recent grave. Keep in mind, literally nobody is buried in the cemetery anymore, except a couple more of my family members who went into the family plot. At this point, my parents are creeped out. My dad, who swears blind that he doesn't believe in ghosts and never will, came down to ask what I was doing, and I explained that I was dancing. He asked me why, and I pointed above the iron cross, and in the jumbled English of a toddler said, The boy is singing, and he wants me to dance. My dad picked me up ran past my mother and got in the car to wait for mum. They went to my great-grandmother's house across the street and told her the whole story, but they all agreed it sounded a bit ridiculous the more they thought about it, and since I was only two, it was probably just a game. So they went back. They entered through different gates. They went over the wall, no matter what they did to try to confuse two-year-old me, I always went back to the same grave. And once again, there was nothing special about it. It wasn't beautiful or impressive. There was no reason for a two-year-old to be so drawn to this little patch of earth. But I always went straight there. I always danced while he sang to me. And I always waved to him before I left. Regardless of which side we left from. Or which winding pathway they took out of the place. They brought other family members with them as witnesses. They had family friends question me about it. I always told the same story. My earliest memory is of my grandmother sitting me down on the cemetery wall while I was trying to dance as instructed, while my parents looked at me, totally scared, and asked me to describe him or tell her what his name is. I don't think I answered her, but I remember finding the looks on their faces just so unbelievably funny, because they were so scared of my friend who only wanted to sing to me. What I didn't know was that my great-grandmother had told the priest, brought him in there to show him the grave, and asked if there was any way to know who was buried in the little unmarked plot. He went off and checked the burial records, and sure enough, five-year-old Robert, the blacksmith's son, had died of TB almost a century earlier and lay there, marked only by the little iron cross that his father made for him. Funnily enough, my great-grandmother knew the blacksmith. He was their next-door neighbour, but he was an old man when she was a little girl, so she never knew the little boy. My parents stopped bringing me to see my friend after that. We only went into the cemetery for funerals. We also moved out of the doctor's house, but it was a few years before I stopped being a creepy little kid that terrified anyone that spoke to me. I actually did go back a couple of years ago and brought a friend of mine visiting Europe from Boston. She told me when we met that she could speak to ghosts and after a couple of weeks I started divulging the hundreds of stories I have from childhood. And she asked if she could come to the cemetery with me. Since the gate was locked, we had to hop the wall once. We were inside. She pointed clean across the top of the headstone and said, Hey, is it over there? Pointing at its location. I nodded, and she started walking towards it and stopped right at the Iron Cross. This one? I nodded. I swear this is totally real. She stood there for a second and then started backing away. I didn't have to ask why. It was the middle of December, and yet the air seemed to fizzle and get really, really hot. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, and the pressure that built up in my head made it feel like my scalp would split open. She told me she wanted to leave, but I was already running out of there, and we vaulted the wall like Olympians. I don't know what happened that day, since I'm not a child anymore and didn't really see anything. But I couldn't shake the feeling that afterwards, that my little friend there felt like I had brought her with me so I could impress her and he didn't like that. Not at all. I don't actually remember any of this to be clear because I was a baby, but I've been in the house several times since and my parents and others have told the story so many times that I may as well have experienced it. Basically, I grew up in a late 18th century townhouse, or part of it anyway. The building itself was a doctor's surgery or GP's office, and it was a family home that had been around for generations. 
my parents rented the top two floors and part of the ground floor. If there were rumours before they moved in, they certainly hadn't heard them. And for the most part, the house was okay. Things really only amped up when I was born. It was an old house. The furniture was all antique. There were portraits on the walls, antique silverware in the basements. There were just three bedrooms despite its size. And the master bedroom was enormous with high Georgian ceilings and clearly old wallpaper and moulding. It was a beautiful room and they tried to stay in it. But after the first night, it became apparent that it wasn't going to be possible. It was freezing for one thing, and even with the heating on and the fire lit in the room, it was just unbearably cold. Not great for a newborn. So they moved to the back bedroom instead, but the master continued to give them the creeps, and they sealed it up, somewhat unsuccessfully. If you closed the door, it popped open again. If you closed the door and locked it, then it would be open again by the next morning. Always the same amount, just about three inches. Only a crack, really. If you closed the door, locked it and piled furniture in front of it, then the banging from inside would keep the baby, me, awake all night. They convinced themselves that the banging was the result of birds nesting in the chimney, rather than something more insidious. But at least it always stopped if you opened the door again. Keep in mind that this is a large, heavy oak Georgian door, with an antique handle that has to be turned to open. They decided that based on the cold of the room, it was clearly a draft which was opening the door, closing it every time they went past, just to feel proactive and move on with their lives. Then I reached the age where I moved out of my parents' room, and into my own room next door with a baby monitor on at all times, to make sure all was well. And it was, except for the other voices that came through it. Whenever I was put to bed, by the time they came downstairs, they'd hear me babbling away on the baby monitor, and slightly more troublingly, a deeper adult voice babbling back. They checked, of course, and whenever they'd open the door, I'd be laughing and reaching for someone above me, but promptly stop and look at them. Pretty soon, they realised there was basically nothing they could do, so they just ignored the babbling and kept an ear open for anything more worrying. My mother tried to convince herself that it was probably interference with another baby monitor on the streets. The noises sure did freak everybody else out a bit, though. My uncle once babysat me when he was just 14, and my parents returned home to find him sitting on the front step, shivering and clutching the baby monitor, me babbling away, crackling through the speaker. Good to know his policy was to abandon me to the ghosts, but it was fine. They didn't ask him back, and he told me years later there was no money they could ever have offered him to make him come back anyway. Sometimes when they themselves went to bed, things would get a little rowdier. There was an outhouse down the back of the yard, and sometimes at night the light would flick on down there at night. Not willing to take the risk that it could be rowdy teenagers or burglars, my dad would invariably haul himself out of bed and go to check it out. And invariably, as soon as he left the building, the clattering and banging in various rooms would start. I don't know why it wanted my dad out of the house to do so, but my mother used to the house by now, would just roll her eyes and wait for him to come back. One morning, they were awakened by banging so loud from the attic, the objects on the bedside locker were vibrating, and my mom was certain that the roof was going to cave in. My dad jumped up, grabbed a flashlight and went to check it out. He came down ten minutes later when the banging came to an end, and told my mother that a bird had gotten in through a loose slate and he managed to get it out. Years later, after they left, he admitted that there was no bird. He just stood up there, terrified, surrounded by knocking and banging that was almost deafening, and then all of a sudden, it just stopped. Things really ramped up when my parents decided to go looking for a new place to live. Tired of renting, they decided to start saving for a deposit, which was perfect, because a woman connected to the house by family ties was really keen to move in and was just about to get married. To her, this big old house was a dream first home. One day, my dad came back from work to find the whole stairs and the walls covered in what he assumed was honey. Annoyed, he blamed the babysitter and asked her not to put honey on my pacifier in case she rotted my teeth. She denied even having any honey on her and my dad let it slide. But the walls and stairs were sticky for weeks despite frequent cleaning. The banging got worse too. More birds in the attic, he assured my mother. 
The lady who was due to move in after we left started sending painters in, and she was dead set on making that grandmaster bedroom into her own room. The painters came three times. The first time they painted the walls and ceiling, left it to dry, etc. And when they came back, next day, not only was the paint still wet, it was sloughing off the walls in places like an ill-fitting skin. So they shrugged. It was a cold room and scraped the paint off to start again. They opened the windows for air. That room always smelled like turned earth, my dad says, because of the damp and cold. Lit a fire in the grate and tried again. Next day, they return. Same thing. Paint just refusing to stick to the walls. They were annoyed this time, starting the job once again. But by the time lunchtime came, they popped their heads into the kitchen, told my mum they'd be back later, and took off unusually quickly. They never came back. They left their paints, brushes, painted clothes, even their radio behind. Dad met them a few days later and asked if they were going to come pick them up. And they waved him off. Don't worry about it. Another painter can take the job. Dad said he asked if they'd seen something. And they went quiet for a second before laughing nervously and heading off in the van. Eventually we moved out and left the house behind. My dad once met the previous tenants in a restaurant and they sheepishly asked how he had liked the house, admitting that they could never even walk past the house anymore. My parents didn't mind it much, but when I asked them if they'd ever go in there again, they hesitated. The tenant after us was my dentist growing up, and at one appointment, she gently asked my mother if she had ever seen anything weird, to which my mother laughed and asked what she had seen. The dentist was the owner's sister, and she told my mom that she had lasted just three months before she left in the night, one day with her new husband, and handed the keys back to her brother. There was never another tenant. Furthermore, the upper floors have now been boarded up and the stairs removed. Nobody, my dentist said, will ever go upstairs in that house again. The weirdest incident happened after we left, but as none of the three of us were there, we always opted to take it with a pinch of salt. The way she told it to my mother, weird things were happening for weeks after they moved, but it, like my parents, they pretended it wasn't going on. One day though, they could hear trickling water, even though there was no rain outside. Obviously in an old house, this is less than ideal, so they started looking for the source. Their search led them to the basement. The basement always scared my dad, a lifelong skeptic, more than any other area of the house, and they didn't tend to go down there pretty much ever, so that was fine. It was larger than the footprint of the actual house and contained a vaulted ceiling kitchen and laundry, as well as the servants' quarters and rooms piled high with antiques. At best guess, it's older than the house itself by at least a century and belongs to an earlier building on the site. Anyway, when they opened the door to the basement, they were met with the sight of water running down the back wall, as if the ceiling had split and was allowing a river to run in through the house. Obviously, they panicked, called a plumber immediately and waited for him to arrive. When he did, they brought him down, but it had been a half hour by now. The three of them stood at the foot of the stairs, and when they opened the door, six inches of water stayed standing, according to the dentist anyway, at least three or four seconds, just enough for it to look totally wrong, but not long enough for anyone to say anything before it rushed over their feet. Well, Flooding like this required the fire department to vacuum it out, so they ran upstairs, feet sopping wet, and called for help. When the fire department arrived, they traipsed back down, dreaded finding out how much water had built up by now, with everything in the room being so valuable, opened the door, and nothing. The room was dry, there was no water, and there was a layer of dust over everything, just as there had always been. The dentist thought she was going mad apparently, and the fire department weren't especially impressed with being called out on a joke. Obviously, as my parents never saw anything like this, so they're not sure of what to make of it. But you never know. Details about the history of that part of town could well point to something that weird happening. Whatever was in that house was clearly a poltergeist, but at the same point, it didn't exactly seem to mean any of us any harm. It just liked babies. It's got the house all to itself now, with just the doctor's surgery operating on the ground floor. I hope it's much happier now.
Since I was young, I've been told I can see spirits. I moved around a couple of times while growing up here, and each house had a spirit or more in them. When I used to live in an apartment at six to eight years old, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing two white yellowish figures at my doorway. I rubbed my eyes to see if I was tripping, but I really did see them and saw them move. One was tall, the other was short. I didn't feel scared, but in disbelief, especially when they started dancing for me. My dad has always been a skeptic, and still is, but apparently we drove past a cemetery one time, and I was too scared to look because I said, I don't want to see no white people, ghosts, and he told my mom that. Another time, still the same age, we moved into a house by a forest, and I saw a huge brown figure pass me at the corner of my eye, and I legit thought it was a bear inside that house. I chased after it, but it was gone. Then my aunt's house caught on fire. Her first son passed away in 2000. My mom decided to take me to the burnt house. When I walked through the doorway, I immediately felt pressure or a force pushing me. My mom felt it too. My instinct was to go upstairs to my cousin's room. I went inside and I felt sorrow, even though I had never been in this room, nor was I attached to it. The room also felt cold. I found myself in tears and I didn't know why I was crying. But maybe it was my cousin's spirit's feelings. Maybe he was sad his home got burned down. I remember seeing photos of the house right after it got burned down. I saw orbs in the pictures and handprints on the walls with long fingers. I asked my aunt for the photos, but she doesn't know where they are. My aunt's friend was also a medium and told her the house was a bad spirit or his bad luck. I don't remember which, and that she would sell it. But she never sold it after many years. Years later in middle high school, I moved to this townhouse. I lived there until I turned about 21. This house has always made me feel uneasy. I'd hear creaking of the floors upstairs like someone is walking. I thought it was just the house being old, but it was built in 1981. There were a couple of times my dog would stare up at the staircase and growl at it. I remember her first sticking up. After that, she would sit by me like she's scared because she was shaking. My mom also had left food out purposefully for spirits. She even cursed her co-worker to death. I'm not sure if it's even related to the house. I used to pray every night because I knew I felt scared all the time when it got dark. I think that house was the only house I truly felt scared every night, or whenever it's dark. But one time, I was praying. I felt someone's breath on my left ear and heard a male voice whispering in a different language. It felt sinister. I was so scared I froze. I told my dad, but he didn't really believe me. We then moved to Arlington by the courthouse in a newly built apartment. I never felt or heard spirits since then, and I was never scared. More time passed, and I decided to move to my aunt's house, which was rebuilt on the same ground. I remember seeing a white figure pass me. It literally looked like someone in a white t-shirt went into my room. I tried to follow it, but it was gone. Another time I was eating with my aunt at the dining table. We were just talking, and I looked up and saw a black figure above her head. I froze because I felt scared but then it disappeared after two or three seconds. It was weird, because I saw it clear as day. A few years ago, my mom went on a solo road trip. She doesn't usually like to travel alone, but I was in college and she wanted to visit some family a few states over. The trip went well, up until the last night on a drive back home. She had booked a room in a and b that looked really nice online, but everything went off the rails when she actually arrived, which I witnessed since I was on the phone, FaceTime, and being informed with texts and photos from her almost the entire night. When she pulled up to the house, it was totally dark. There were no lights on inside, and it seemed almost deserted. When she called the B&B to say that she'd arrived, she was told to take a key from under the doormat and unlock the door herself as the innkeeper had been caught away in an emergency, and she would be the only one there for the night. She was already a bit uncomfortable with the situation, but went inside anyway, since she had already paid the fee and didn't have anywhere else to stay. The interior was old-timey looking, with velvet drapes, thick, dusty carpets, 
shelves full of photos and trinkets, and weirdest of all, many decorative plates with babies and children painted on them all over the walls. My mum locked the door behind her and went upstairs quite quickly, since she was feeling scared. Upstairs was worse, though, with the continued vintage furnishings and the unfortunate addition of about 15 ceramic dolls in each room, arranged on the beds and propped up on the tables and shelves. At this point, my mum was really freaked out, but kept trying to convince herself that there wasn't actually anything scary about the inn, or the dolls or anything else there. So she picked a room and started trying to go to bed. She did find herself turning the dolls around in her room so they faced the wall, even though she's usually a stark disbeliever in anything paranormal. That's when everything got really strange. She started hearing sounds all over the house. Very human-like sounds. It started with creaking, then footsteps and whispering. My mom was overtaken with fear in a way she'd never experienced before. She found herself frozen in place, where she quite literally couldn't move, while hearing more and more activity. The sounds eventually escalated to screaming, crashing and banging sounds from all over the house. After a few minutes, my mom managed to shake herself from the paralysation and realised that she needed to get out as fast as she could. She was so terrified that she actually tried climbing out of the window on the second storey. But the roof below was too steep and she had to climb back inside. Then she took a fireplace poker, since she said she didn't know if the noise was from some robbers or something, gathered up her stuff and ran into the hallway and down the stairs. She was quite shocked to see that everything was exactly as it was when she came in. Except for one thing. A single one of the baby plates had fallen from the wall and shattered on the floor. There were no people in the house. The door wasn't bashed in. All the furniture was in the same dusty spots as before. She booked it from the door, threw it open, dropped the house key somewhere in the front yard and drove away. She had never been more afraid in her entire life and had never been less sure in her opinion that ghosts were fake. She drove around the town for a while and ended up in a Motel 6 where she probably slept about 45 minutes, then came home. Unfortunately for her though, that isn't where the story ends. She had been looking forward to arriving home so that she could be finally done with the whole frightening occurrence, maybe get some sleep, and watch some reality TV that had been recorded while she was gone. What she didn't account for was the ghostly hitchhiker that seemed to follow her back. That first night home, she fell asleep on the couch with the TV on. Around 2am, the TV turned off on its own, and she woke up suddenly to hear loud footsteps running through the living room. She lives totally alone in a standalone house. Weird things continued to happen for about two or three months, including a constant problem with the TV turning on or off, changing volume, changing the channel by itself. She would hear voices, screams, and footsteps throughout the house, and would often wake up to have items in the kitchen and living room moved around very weirdly, with no explanation. The most notable of which was when the toaster has mysteriously moved to the top of the fridge one night. Fortunately, my mom really dedicated herself to 100% ignoring the ghost and trying to avoid feeding negative or scared energy into it. And after a few months, it went away. She felt like she knew for sure that it was a ghost and that it latched onto her that night in the inn. She certainly isn't much of a skeptic anymore. For a long time, I've had encounters of the paranormal kind, mostly while awake, but there have been a few instances that the spirits of loved ones visit my dreams. Back in 2005, I was living in New York. I moved here from Texas due to heavy involvement in drugs and gangs. I was there for about five months, met a girl, and moved in with her and her family. One night, I had an incredibly vivid dream about my grandmother. In my dream, I was walking on a beautiful beach with white sand. Just ahead of me was a canopy or something. You know those pop-up things people put up at picnics and barbecues to give shade? Well, I woke up to it, and there was my grandmother, sitting in a folding chair, in front of a folding table, wearing a beautiful black dress totally out of place for where we found ourselves. I sat down in the chair opposite her and looked around confused. It was an odd scene to say the least. 
Oh, hey, she said, realising I was there. Want to play some Uno or Dominoes? We used to play one or the other every time we were together. Still confused, I said, sure, but what are we doing here? As she set up the dominoes and did the whole shuffling thing, she said, well, you weren't around and I wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? Where are you going? I asked. She didn't answer my question, but did say, please promise me that you'll stay out of trouble and be a good man. I promise, but where are you going? What are we doing here? I asked. She looked out over the ocean. Remember, I love you, I heard her say. As I turned back to say, I love you too, she was gone. I stood up and looked around and saw her walking into the surf. I walked after her saying, Nanny, Nanny, that's what we called her. Where are you going? She didn't answer and kept walking out into the ocean until she was completely gone. I was stricken with a sense of panic, but only for a moment, because as I looked around, I realised the canopy, chairs and table were gone, and had been replaced with a set of wide, white stone chairs or stadium-type seats, and sitting on all of these were all of my family, uncles, aunts, cousins and my mother. I woke up gasping for air with a totally weird feeling of urgency. I had to call and check on my grandma. I called my mother immediately, and before she could say anything, I asked, Is Nanny okay? My mother paused, and I heard a sniffle. Son, Nanny passed about an hour ago. I was about to call you and let you know, she said through restrained sobs. The dream suddenly made sense. She had come to me to say goodbye. See, I was raised around my mother's side of the family, who's a bunch of white country folk. I'm mixed, and I'm a little more brown than the rest of the grandbabies. Growing up, I was treated less than welcome by quite a few family members, but never Nanny. She loved me like I was just one of the babies, never made me feel unwelcome. If anything, she made me feel more loved than some of the others. We were pretty close. It was so heartwarming to know that before she left our plane of existence, she came to say goodbye to being thousands of miles away. It's a moment in my life that I'll never forget. So, I've been witness to a lot of paranormal and unexplainable events in my life. It's not that I go looking for it or anything, I just always seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Honestly, I would think myself a loony tune if others hadn't shared some of these moments with me. One day my wife, a friend and I were sitting on the couch watching God knows what, and having a discussion about something, when my wife stopped mid-sentence and said, what the hell is that? Is that a spider? She pointed at something, but at first, me and my friend didn't know what she was trying to point at. Then we saw it. In the centre of the living room, there seemed to be something small and black hanging in the air. We all at first thought it was a spider or some bug. My wife is scared of spiders, so being the man of the house, I step up to remove the pest from the premises. When I got up and approached the thing, I quickly realised it was in fact not a spider or a bug. What I was looking at was, to me, what seemed like a drop of tar black ink suspended in the air. I was like, guys, this is not a spider. Look. I then proceeded to wave my hands around it, above and below, and there was absolutely nothing holding it in place. Being either incredibly brave or stupid, I went to touch it when my wife screamed to me, no, don't touch it, are you crazy? I stopped short, but not because of her, as I was going in to touch it, I saw movement from this ink. It was your typical teardrop shape, but the skinny top part of the teardrop was moving around like a squid tentacle. This was some for real, Marvel's Venom, symbiote looking shit. I pulled my hand back and I sat back down on the couch between my friend and wife. For the next five minutes that felt like an hour, the three of us sat in total awe at this black ink floated about seven foot from the centre of the living room, past all three of us through the storage room door that was closed. It just materialised right through it. My first question was, we all saw that, right? Of course they had. My wife was the first to see it. My friend left immediately after, and my wife and I, still to this day, talk about the mysterious ink blob that floated through our living room. Crazy stuff, man.
This all started when I was 12. It was around late 2012. We met the girl, let's call her Sarah, and her boyfriend at the time through my cousin and a bunch of his friends. Sarah was a really kind-hearted person, almost too pure for the world. She was black, although lighter skinned in complexion, had short natural red hair and freckles. She was also very heavy in weight, I believe almost twice my size, and keep in mind I'm a plus sized girl myself. And almost everyone she knew, including her boyfriend, who was also cheating on her and let it be known, made fun of her for her looks. I was going through the exact same thing and still am, so I understood. My family and I, as in my mom, stepdad and little sisters, tried everything we could to at least get a smile out of her, with varying degrees of success. But we all knew she was very depressed, and her self-esteem was very low, to the point of no fix. Sarah stayed in our apartment for a couple of months before moving in with my cousin's then girlfriend. Let's call her Susie. My building is in the front of Susie's was all the way on the other side in the back. So Sarah would come back and visit on a regular basis. All seemed normal until one day she showed up. I don't remember everything that was said, but I do remember one thing vividly. She sighed and told my mom she was leaving. I didn't think much of it at first. Then one day, I came home from school to the news that Sarah had committed suicide, and I'm 100% sure it was her boyfriend, mainly, who drove her to her breaking point. She was only 23, she was also pregnant at the time, and it happened a month after I turned 13. Susie moved out of the apartment complex very soon after that happened, and if you don't already know, when you commit suicide or die a violent and unexpected death, your soul tends to remain trapped here on earth for various reasons. The experience I'm about to explain in a minute made me believe in this even more strongly. So in other words, she is stuck in the apartments in which she died and haunts it. Several months later, everyone pretty much has moved on. I made the dumb move of taking a shortcut through that particular building. When I walked past the apartment door, I started catching a smell that I very much associated with Sarah. I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me at first, but the smell was so strong that I started feeling dizzy. I felt like I was being watched and I started hearing heavy, lazy footsteps. The hairs on my neck and arms were standing at attention. Something urged me to turn around and that's when I realised it wasn't my imagination at all. I saw a huge, shadowy figure at first. Remember I mentioned she was very large in size. Then saw the edge of a blue lilo and stitch blanket that once belonged to me, emerging from the shadow. I remember giving the blanket to her months before she died and because she loved it so much, she always covered herself in it. The closer the figure was coming to me, the more I got scared, the sadder was the atmosphere and the heavier the air. I bucked it the hell out of the building and was even amazed at how fast I got home. To this day, I get chills and feelings of being watched when I walk past that building. I never saw her physically again, but I still try to avoid that building when I can. As for her boyfriend, I rarely hear from him now. Maybe he settled down with another woman and he's now laying low. Maybe he moved. For context, I've been friends with someone for a couple of years now, and he had a very rough childhood to say the least. One of the reasons was he spent a large portion of his childhood without his mother. That's important. As he got older, he tried to look for her and the reason for her disappearance from his life. I promised to help him look for his mom, and I did try, but my research was pretty much fruitless. Until two weeks ago. He lives in a different country, so we can't physically meet yet. We went from texting most every day to not texting for weeks at a time. So naturally I was concerned. I hit up another friend of mine who reads tarot cards and asked her to tap into his energy for me to check if he was doing okay. Things were normal until she told me she kept hearing a woman crying and saying, I'm sorry, and mommy did not abandon you in Korean. The guy is ethnically Korean. Immediately after, my friend tells me she was starting to lose control of her movements. And all of a sudden, I hear what sounded like a completely different woman crying and talking to me, completely in Korean on the other line. In other words, my friend was possessed. 
At that point, I was freaking out because I didn't expect a random entity to pull up during a tarot reading. I'm a scaredy cat by nature, so normally I would hang up right then and there. But this time I felt compelled to stay and listen. And the spirit didn't feel like a bad one anyway, so I thought, what's the worst that could happen? I felt deep in my soul that I was speaking to my friend's mother and I couldn't shake that feeling off. So I said her name and asked if it was her that I was speaking to. She confirmed it was her. She understood what I was saying in English, but replied in Korean. Because I didn't speak Korean, she would let my friend come back to her normal self to translate what was being said to me. We spoke for a while, and I learned quite a lot about her. She seemed to be quite fond of me, and explicitly stated she didn't mind that I was from a different race and culture from her son. She was a very sweet lady who was a victim of life circumstances, and was looking out for her son, even in death. This is my craziest paranormal experience to date, but it's also one of the most wholesome experiences I've ever had. I don't think I'll ever forget about it or her. So this just happened today, so it's super fresh. A little long also. A little background, I've had paranormal experiences before that were super scary. It always occurs when I'm half asleep, or even dead asleep at 3am. I've heard whispers in another language, and the next day was the worst day of my life. Maybe I'll tell the bad experiences in another post. So I learned in the past few years that these things are real. First hand experience. Coming to today, I moved to a new country, and ever since I moved to this home, I have weird dreams every day. I don't usually dream much, and I know it's in this home only, because last week I was on vacation in another place, and had zero dreams. But it never felt evil here. It just felt weird. So today, I had a major interview, which I'd been preparing for for a week. I'd set an alarm, and I'm that type of person who needs a single alarm to wake up. My interview was at 11am, alarm was at 9am. I snoozed unfortunately, but once I did that, I was still remembering my preparation and answers for the interview, while resting my eyes when I was half asleep. This is when I feel a distinct someone poking my shoulder from behind to wake me up. Twice. It was like poke, two second gap, poke. My eyes immediately open, and I see I'm laying facing my husband, so the wall is behind me. I could still feel a little pressure on where it poked. I started praying because at first, I thought it's another bad entity like the last couple of times. My heart is exploding and I'm praying, but unlike last time, I felt the vibes were not negative. So I turned around and grabbed my phone to see the time. It was 10.30 a.m. and the ghost woke me up for the interview. I just thanked him and told him to please don't help or come in front of me because I'm scared of this stuff. For some context on this situation, I live with four roommates, and several days ago at around 2.30 in the morning, it sounded like someone was moving pots and pans around in our kitchen very loudly. At the time, I thought nothing of this as we're all college students, so someone was surely making a meal late at night. I asked all of them in the following days, and no one was out of their rooms or was awake at that time. One other roommate heard this and had the same thought. After this, we searched the whole house and even checked in our attic to see if someone was there. No one was up there, and nothing has occurred since. Besides the gaping hole where one of my roommates fell through the ceiling, he's okay and it was hilarious. Until I had a very strange occurrence earlier in the day. I'm still pretty creeped out as this happened a little less than an hour ago. I was sitting at my desk just doing some work, and had been there for a couple of hours, not doing much. Just in the flow of work and in my own little world. I have a journal with a pen resting next to it that's been stationary for hours. I notice the pen start to move slightly and move back to its original position and think nothing of it. But once I take my eyes off the pen and back to the monitor, it rolls to the middle of my desk and stops in the middle of my mouse pad. This may be a tiny thing that I chalked up to me doing something that caused it to move. I was looking for a song on my TV and was completely motionless when this occurred. I proceeded to stare at this pen for a minute or two, and I say out loud, Roll it back, please. 
I was hoping for something, but unfortunately, nothing occurred. I put the pen back in its original spot and started messing with it, seeing what caused it to move and if something minor could have caused this. I can confidently say that it took some energy to get this pen rolling from the side of my journal. This was not a gust of wind that caused this and was not caused by a banging on the desk or any other type of motion in the room, as there was none. The other very concerning thing about this is that the pen continued to roll down the entirety of my mouse pad until it hit my keyboard, unlike what it did when it first moved where it stopped in the middle of my desk. I've tried rolling this pen repeatedly for the past hour and a half and cannot recreate it without it stopping the pen itself. I know this is pretty minor compared to other people's experiences, but this was enough for me to sage my house and hope for the best. This story happened three years ago when I was 15 in my village. I don't tell this story much because people tend to think I'm making it up, but I've been thinking of it quite a lot this week and I want people to know. My village is located in a rural area that's protected by the government because it's been considered a natural paradise for the last 30 years. This means that exploration in the area is quite difficult nowadays since it's forbidden to cut trees which means that it's a huge forest. I was spending my summer there and my favourite thing was going hiking, although I'd never gone alone into the woods, just roads with people. My grandma had told me that cleaning services had opened and rehabilitated a path that has been covered in bushes and trees for the last 30 years because of a race that was being prepared, like runners and stuff. Usually, I'd go to the nearest town, one hour away by foot, by the only way I knew, the road. On my way back from seeing friends there, I took the new path my granny said was safe alone. Mistake. The first part of the path was the easiest, just too many obstacles and slides, but it was nothing compared to the rest. The second part was a hill full of rocks that was the hardest thing to go up. Literally had to climb on four legs like a dog. When I got to the top, I looked around and found some animal bones. I didn't pay much attention to it since the area is known for its big population of wolves and bears that go out at night. I continued my way faster than before. This part was plain floor where the woods really begin, so it was a relief until I got to a dead end. Some huge trees had fallen exactly on a row on the path, and it was impossible to pass them. This seems really off to me, because there were no other fallen trees. The weirdest part? Aside from those trees, there was a little barn. Yes, a barn, in the middle of the woods. I thought to myself that it was probably abandoned. It looked like it. So I decided to throw my bag into the little field that belonged to the barn, and then I crossed the fence. I crossed it running without realising the most bizarre thing. That field had no trees in it. It was clear. No bushes, no big plants, nothing. It really shouldn't be like that if it was abandoned. I started feeling concerned about how the location of the fallen trees was so coincidental. How there casually was a barn inside a clear field when that path had been closed for 30 years. It just seemed really off. I went on and luckily... I was reaching the last hill my grandma had described, the one that connected with the village. Suddenly there was a moment of silence in the woods, which allowed me to hear some branches cracking behind me. I thought to myself if it was a bird or something, but they came closer. They really sounded like footsteps. After trying to convince myself it was probably an animal, I was so afraid I couldn't look back. I started walking faster. Guess what? So did the footsteps. I just started running after noticing that, and so did the footsteps again. I was running for my life at this point. Suddenly, I started hearing incredibly loud grunts. Everything was going really fast. Luckily, I got to my village in a minute or so after that. I got into the patio of the first house I found and closed the door. It was a relative's house, no need to call the police. I stayed there for 10 minutes until I got my breath back and then came back home. I get chills from just remembering the place, not having a signal in the middle of nowhere, and the grunts. It makes me think there was something following me since the barn, and the trees were just a distraction to slow me down. Never went into the woods alone after that. I 
I'm a male in my 20s and do medical work from home. Therefore, my internet is a need for my job. After phone issues, I never reconnected my number since what I need it for is on Wi-Fi anyways, and I rarely travel. So figured it doesn't pay financially when there's access to most needs. Anyways, all morning long, my programs were running slowly and things weren't responding. While currently living with my grandmother, as I'm working, I hear when the family calls to check in on her. My uncle normally calls earlier than normal on this day and claims he called her multiple times before while no calls came through. Around 1.50 p.m., everything crashed completely. No phone or internet was available. I tried to restart the router multiple times, completely shutting off and checking wires. Previous DSL wires were spliced and have managed to be fixed, but after all, still no phone or internet. No service on my cell phone, so all means of communication were down. You got this rundown, so this is where things get odd. 2.50 p.m., a state trooper shows up at my door, claiming they received a 911 call from our landline number. Confused, I asked her what, about what time she received the call, and she replied 15 minutes before she showed up at the door. My grandmother doesn't have a life alert for when I'm not there, so I informed her of it. She did restate that the call did come from the landline number, also confirming the last few digits. She asked to come in and we talked some more. She made conversation with my grandmother and I went to grab the house phone. I saw the screen still displaying the check telephone line, stating it's still down. I went back to her, saying we couldn't possibly make the call while giving her the phone. She picked up and it was dead air, no sound. 11 p.m. as I'm writing this and still no connection. I told her about the situation this morning and that when she received the call, it was within the time frame of not being able to receive a connection. Her face said it all. I still have no clue what happened and I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. We have the internet back, but still no phone. The internet came back about 15 minutes after the trooper headed out. I've dealt with paranormal events in my life and even more. Recently, I found a painting known as the Crying Boy in an antique shop near me and have photos of it. DCB is known as a cursed painting. Not sure if there's relevance of having the photos of it on my phone or not, or if this is just another paranormal experience to add to my list. After all, the trooper did mention my deceased grandfather's name, who I've also had several visual experiences with after missing him some nights. Would love to tell more stories about my life, have photos and more to go along with some of them. As an avid horror fan, across all media and otherwise, I've always been interested in the paranormal. That being said, I've also always been a huge skeptic. I poke holes in other stories all the time. I always have. I've just never been on that side of the fence. I swear by science and logic and whatever, but earlier something fairly small happened that completely rocked me. I woke up at around 1.40am and went to the loo about 10-15 minutes later at which point I was already properly awake because I'd let my dogs out into the garden and been on my phone for a little while. My bedroom is at the bottom of my stairs. My loo is at the top. Anyway, when I came back downstairs and into my room, I checked my door so my dogs didn't get out of my room when I went back to sleep and sat down. Not 20 seconds later, I hear a diamond coming from the stairs. This isn't uncommon in my house since five people live here so someone is always up to use the loo or get a drink or whatever. But when it got to the bottom of the stairs, my door opened and the hallway was empty and the lights were still off. I went out to look and everyone's bedroom doors were shut and no one was up and about. Someone mentioned my stairs creaking on their own because yes, there would. But I've just lived in this house for nearly a decade. They creak on their own all the time nowadays but anyone with old wooden stairs would probably know the difference between that and someone literally walking down them. My door, when shut, literally can't be opened on its own because of the type of latch it is or whatever it's called. I know no one here has any reason to believe me, but I was hoping someone would humour me and just give me their take on it. Being a skeptic has been a big part of me for a long, long time, so I guess I'm pretty rattled by this. Strange stuff happens around me all the time, but I'm almost always always able to come up with a logical explanation. I can't do this one.
Yesterday, when I was going to sleep, I walked up the stairs to my bedroom at about 1am. I live with my parents, so my mum was sleeping in her room, my dad fell asleep on the couch, my dog was sleeping in the bedroom. When I closed the door, I heard heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. I have a very creaky staircase, so you can hear when someone is walking up. I checked and there was no one there. My mum's still sleeping in her room and my dad's still asleep on the couch. So I just moved in from an apartment building to a quite old house a few months ago, which was at first quite strange to me since the apartment I lived in was small and the family wanted to quickly swap, even though they had a bigger house and they th have, I think, three children that will have to share one bedroom, but they still really wanted to swap with us. So we did the swap and there was not much going on at the start. Things began to get a bit weird after about three months. At first, I started only hearing some weird sounds, like footsteps coming from upstairs. Didn't really pay much attention to that. After some time, occasionally doors in the house, mostly to my bedroom, started opening by themselves. One time on Halloween nights, the doors to my room busted open like someone kicked it. I then started waking up sometimes at about three at night by my dog that sleeps in my room every night, barking and growling at nothing in the room. This happened a lot, not every night, but maybe a few times a month. I started hearing heavy things being dropped in my bedroom from time to time, but when I went to check, I could never find anything that might have fallen. Although sometimes I can see things falling on their own. One night, a cabinet opened up itself and a jar dropped from it. I remember a few days ago, I woke up in the morning to get ready for college and my dad's guitar started playing by itself. There wasn't any songs, just like something was hitting random strings. After that, the guitar just fell. The guitar was standing there for about a month without anyone ever touching it. A few nights ago, I remember I woke up at around 3 a.m. to see my dog growling at nothing in my room when suddenly the door opened by itself. My dog walked out of my room through that door and started barking at something at the bottom of the stairs. I told her to go back in, close the door, but she didn't stop growling. This might also sound a bit weird, but sometimes you can feel like something is staring at you when you walk up the stairs. I've also got an Alexa, and sometimes when no one says anything, she would randomly go, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Or she would start saying some random Wikipedia articles when no one was talking to her. I have an EMF. So I tried to leave it on my shelf and record through the night with a night vision camera, but I didn't manage to capture anything. One night, I did record something that looked like an orb, but I thought it was just a bug. As I said, I don't know if I'm overreacting or not, but just thought it might, I might ask someone for help. I spent August 2019 to August 2020 living in a Catholic volunteer house. While I was religious, I didn't really believe in much of the paranormal outside of cryptids and extraterrestrials. The church was more of a social thing for me and I was deeply drawn to the ritual of it all. I point this out to make it clear that I wasn't looking for an experience in that house. It didn't take long living there to start noticing odd things. It started off as the sound of footsteps that was easy to write off. It was an old house, and perhaps the house was just shifting, as some people say. These footsteps became so constant that it clearly couldn't be the sounds of an old house. The footsteps were loud, the day and night, when the house was full and when there was just one person inside. I stopped denying this when the steps were obviously coming from the stairs. The clear sound of top floor windows closing and opening started, and nothing sounds like that other than just that. The basement door to the outside would open by itself after we knew for sure it was closed and locked, not even a minute before it suddenly opened. It was like these sounds were well thought out. They would lead me to the attic only for me to immediately hear rushing steps down the stairs on the floor below me. So often, I would be led to the basement and my attention couldn't shift from the doors to the call room. Looking at those doors filled me with an odd dread that would go away the moment I walked away. My housemates were scared, and being the only male in a Catholic program put a bit of pressure on me to do something. Just a cultural expectation. I tried getting a priest out to do a blessing, but he couldn't because of COVID. A strange bummer to me given the theology. 
I ended up trying my best to bless the house myself with one of my housemates. That did nothing to stop any of it. When I was 10 years old, my brother and I were the last ones off the bus from school every day. We were nearing my house which is in the Midwest countryside. Lots of cows and trees and fields etc. Anyways, about a mile away from the house, I looked out the window and saw an orange blimp in the sky. Standard American football shaped blimp. Surprisingly, I didn't think anything of it. Because a day or so beforehand, me and a bunch of kids at recess saw a blue blimp in the sky. I watched it and thought it was cool to see a blimp this far outside of town, especially near my house. After a few seconds, the blimp shifted from a football shape to a star, literally shrunk before my eyes into a tiny shiny dot that resembled a star in the night sky. Except it wasn't a star, it was just a blimp a second ago. Not even two seconds after it shifted, it launched even further into the sky, shot down to its original height and then shot completely off into space. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever experienced. I was a quiet kid, but being the last kid on the bus besides my brother, I shouted about it. And when I got off the bus, I ran to my mother to tell her, like a crazy old man yelling end times. My mother said I was crazy, naturally, and I never told my dad because mom shut me down pretty hard and it killed my mood. Fast forward years later, shortly after I turned 22, my dad and I took a short road trip to go pick up a car he bought halfway across the state. We talked about a lot and somehow got on the topic of UFOs. He told me when he was 12 or 13, he and his brothers were playing down by a creek near their house. Which by the way, his old house was only a few miles down away from our house. And they saw an orange football shaped object in the sky. I was absolutely blown away when he said that. My father's skeptical and doesn't believe in this kind of stuff ever. But when I shared my story, he paused and admitted it was very, very odd to have seen the same exact thing more than 30 years apart. The only reason I believe ghosts exist is because I experienced an EVP on accident once when I was 15 years old. I was recording a 1v1 basketball game with my brother and I in our driveway. Watched the video a couple times and realised a little halfway through the video a voice said, What you doing Ian? And then laughs in an inhuman way. A sort of cross between a ghoul and cartoon character, hard to explain. I remember showing my sister and brother-in-law they said, Oh dude you're done for, and laughed. My mother, who doesn't really believe in ghosts, was trying to, her hardest not to hear it and when she finally heard it, she said I did it to trick her. My friends straight up didn't know how to react. They don't believe in ghosts. Nobody else was home that day but my mom, me and my brother. My brother and I were playing basketball and my mom isn't really one to play tricks or mimic spirits. She's straightforward and religious. There's something very, very unsettling about a spirit saying your actual name. It knows me. It didn't say something generic or random like hello or stay away. It literally said my name. That has to mean it's been around for a while. It makes my skin crawl to think something has been watching me without me knowing for knows how long. Growing up, I never experienced anything paranormal. Why and how would something say my name on a random video like that? Broad daylight, unprovoked. Where did it come from? This scenario happened when I was younger, maybe 8 or 7. My older brother and I shared a bedroom since we lived in a pretty small apartment at the time and it was next to a really busy road so there was always a lot of noise. It was time for us to go to sleep since it was a school night, so I go say goodnight to my older sister and parents and head to bed. My older brother's bed was by the window and mine was up against a wall. Since we lived next to a super busy road, the street lamp would shine through our window because our curtains were really thin. A little while goes by and I struggled to fall asleep because I could hear drunk people screaming and shouting at cars that drove past. Then all of a sudden everything goes quiet. No cars, no people, nothing. 
I find this odd, but don't think much of it when my cat runs up to the window. Before I could question why she did, I heard the weirdest, loudest, unexplainable screech. I went to grab my cat away from the window because I didn't want whatever made that noise to see her. The noise obviously woke my brother up. We both looked out the window to see what it was. There was this weird pterodactyl looking creature sitting on top of the street lamp with its wings wide open. I look at my brother and he looks like he's about to cry. I grab him and my cats and we run to my bed and hide under the blankets since it's furthest away from the window. When we woke up the next morning, I told my older sister about what happened and she said that she heard the noise too. She looked out her window briefly and saw it fly out of view. I drew what it looked like just to make sure what she saw wasn't just a bird and she said that it looked exactly like that. We told our parents about it and they really didn't comment, comment much on it since my siblings and I have a history of telling our parents weird abnormal things. Like seeing a tall man walk up and down the stairs at night and another man standing at the edge of our beds looking at us. Let's just say, I hope I never hear or see that thing again. When I was six or seven, we moved out to a ranch in the countryside of Laredo, Texas. Not a lot of people with good income lived out there. Most houses were isolated and surrounded by woods. My mom and stepdad decided to rent this house because rent was cheap. Only three fifty a month. No indoor plumbing or central air. A lot of low income families lived out here. There was a family that lived next to us. A family of six kids, all girls and two adults. They were also low income and often didn't have much to eat. My mum would often help them out with food and in return the kids would come over and help my mum clean the house. This one day they came over and ate dinner with us, helped my mum clean and me and the youngest girl that was about my age fell asleep on my bed. After a while my mum woke us up because it was getting late and she needed to go home. Her sisters had left her behind because they didn't want to wake her. It was a good walk home, as there was a dirt road leading to our house to get to hers. My mum was going to send my brother to walk her, but I butted in and said, please can I walk her? As we were friends, my mum said yes. So I then walked her to the gate. After we departed, I started on my way home. When out of nowhere, she comes running behind me crying, throws herself at me and pulls me down by the shoulders. I ask her what's wrong, what happened? She points up and says, look up there, look. She was pointing up at the top of some abandoned train cars. And what I saw till this day, I cannot explain. There were three skeletons walking back and forth. It was like, what the? One was laying on its side and it had clothes on too, like a tank top and shorts. The other two were standing up, just walking back and forth be behind that one, stopping and waving hi. We looked at each other and ran to my house. I quickly told my mom what we saw. My mom and two brothers plus us went back to look and they were still there, waving hi at us. We threw rocks at them, but the rocks didn't phase them, just like went through them. Either that or we were bad at aiming. After a while, we went home and never saw them again. Till this day, I can't seem to understand or be able to explain how those skeletons were moving. Someone probably say we were hallucinating, but how can five people see the same thing? Some have said it was Halloween props, but no, it was the 90s and I never saw any Halloween props that moved that well during that time. The technology wasn't real yet for that kind of movement. Halloween props like that cost a lot of money and that family couldn't even afford to eat. We were in a dirt poor country. I think I'm going slightly mad, but who knows? I bought my first house two years ago. It was built in the 40s or 50s, a terraced house with a converted attic. At first, I lived here alone and everything was okay. I felt watched sometimes, but I figured it was just me living alone for the first time. I then started looking after my family dog during my first lockdown. I didn't feel watched as much, but whatever it was felt further away. 
I mentioned it to my mum and sister, but they just thought I was being odd. As I wasn't scared, whatever it didn't want to hurt me, they just observed, so it was dismissed. My partner moved in and I started feeling watched at night, as I'm a night owl, but I just closed the door or I would feel whatever it was peeking in through the crack of the door. We got a puppy who just seems sort of oblivious but is always around me, especially when I go upstairs. I've always been sensitive when it comes to these things and have only seen something very scary once, but that was a very long time ago at a different house. My mother moved in with my partner and I and stayed in the converted attic. She used to be a sound sleeper since she moved in though she can't get a good night's sleep. I'm pregnant and things have been getting creepier. Firstly, I keep seeing something standing out of the corner of my eye, no matter what I'm doing. I'll look to where it should be, but I see nothing. When I go back to it, it's gone for a little while and then comes back and I have to check again. Today, it was while I was working and it was standing by my window, but each time I looked, it was gone. Second, when I was awake at night, I love pregnancy insomnia, there's something peeking from the bathroom. The dog sleeps on the bed and he ignores it, but then I started getting an image in my head out of nowhere of something crawling from the bathroom down the hall. This has only been since I've been pregnant, and only when it's dark. I have to check the door is still, or I swear it opens more. Probably an overactive brain in the wind. Third, so my mum hasn't been sleeping well. Waking up a lot, she thought it was stress from work. Last night she feels something tapping her on both sides of the chest. She was awake. The next thing she feels when she turns over is something tapping her on her arm, keeping her awake. She feels that it may have been waking her up for a while, but this is the first time she's been awake for it. Pretty sure there's been more than what I've put, but nothing springs to mind. So what do you guys think is going on with my house? Moving out isn't an option at this time, even though I do plan to move in the next few years. I moved to Texas, but I had to fly to Utah to pick up my car. It's February 2020, and I leave Utah at approximately 6pm, with a friend who flew with me. We decided we'd spend the night in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so we could get some sleep and we'd arrive there around 4am. So we're driving, things are fine. You have to pass through a reservation to get to the main highway for Albuquerque, and something felt off from the second we entered New Mexico. It's maybe 2 or 3 a.m. at this point and my friend was fast asleep with her head against the window while I played the music loudly. We had to drive slowly as the speed limit was only 35 or 45 miles an hour. As we got further into the reservation, I heard a sharp knock on the roof of my car. It was hard enough to be clearly heard over the music. My friend was startled awake and asked what happened. I shrugged because I didn't want to stop. This might have been intuition, but I'd rather have rock damage or drive on a flat tire or anything else than stop on that road. It was dark and something just felt wrong. I had really absurdly bright LED headlights on my car and as such, I could see a few miles ahead of where my car was going. My friend was watching the road and I slowed down to get a better look while I was still a good distance away. What I saw freaks me out to this day. The best way I could describe it was a body of a human, half contorted downward. The hair and head was upside down, and its arms were like large, stalactite looking things. The thing was so dark that my headlights couldn't penetrate it. However, it illuminated everything around it. Its face wasn't looking at us originally, but it twisted its head around to look at us. It didn't have facial features, but it looked distorted like it had a broken jaw or something, and it was almost blurry. I pride myself on my photographic memory, but it was like it didn't want me to see it. At this point, we're no more than 50 to 75 feet away and I step on it. My friend asked if I saw that and I nodded my head. I didn't even want to talk if I was being honest. I didn't want to breathe. I was shaking so badly. It felt ominous, evil. I can't explain in full detail the fear I felt. It was like it penetrated my bones. It was a primal instinct to run and run as fast as I could away from it. I told her not to look back. We don't want it to follow us. 
I swear I drove a solid 120 plus miles an hour until I got off the reservation. We didn't end up stopping in Albuquerque. I've drove all the way to Lubbock instead and we spent the night there. I grew up from about nine years in Florida for the first part of my life living in St. Augustine and Jacksonville area. For those of you who don't know, St. Augustine is one of the oldest and most haunted cities in the USA. In particular, there are two different forts located on the main island and on a smaller island across from each other. I cannot fully recall the history of the two forts, but they would fight on the daily with the mainland firing cannons at the island fort and so forth. I was maybe about six to nine years of age when this happened. My parents had taken my brother and I on a day trip to tour the fort on the mainland. This fort was also a popular spot for ghost tours telling stories about the prisoners kept underneath the fort and how they would be brought to the outside walls to be executed and burned in a stone oven as well. I'm assuming this all happened during the early settlements of America with colonists and whatnot. My brain can't recall the history so don't hate on me. Common ghost appearances would be uniformed soldiers marching around at their stations and the like. The fort never employed real life actors to dress up or anything, so if you saw a uniformed period styled person, it was likely a ghost. The day we went to the fort to tour it was like any other, with plenty of visitors meandering inside and outside the walls. Since it was a relatively small, my parents let my brother and I roam inside on our own. I had gone to the centre of the fort and noticed four to five men in period uniforms on the right staircase, hauling a whole cannon up the stairs like it was nothing. Nobody around me seemed to take notice of these men doing this, and I stared in utter disbelief that they suddenly appeared and began to drag a cannon upstairs to the ramparts. Not a minute later, I heard a loud cannon boom and jumped. I went running to my mother to ask her if she, she heard the cannon as well, to which she replied that she heard nothing. Nobody saw anything or heard any noise except me. In the middle of the day, no less. So I'd like to start by saying I had a paranormal investigation team come to my apartment. They cleansed it. And it all seemed to calm down for the most part after their third visit. But just before Christmas activity exploded, doors slamming open in my apartment, voices, running footsteps, the faucets turning off and on by itself, even my dog getting pet sometimes, and what looks like slapped others. I also have a clear as day voice memo of my friend and I sitting on the couch. On Saturday, while I was using the bathroom, it sounded like someone broke into my apartment. I still have Christmas decorations up and the jingle bells on my front door went ballistic like someone swung the door open and shut it. Granted, I never heard the door shut and it was locked. It was about 1.30am and I live alone. My dog and kitten were hissing and snarling like someone they hate just walked in. I must stress that my kitten and dog are very loving towards each other and don't ever fight each other. I'm 5'1 and about 110 pounds. I'm not big, but I tried to make myself as seem as mean as possible. And I ran out of the bathroom with one of my little pocket tasers out. What I saw when I exited the bathroom was shocking to say the least. The heavy tray full of random things on my coffee table was now on the floor. Mind you, the only side I had heard before this was booming footsteps. Not something that I have trouble picking up sometimes laying on the ground. All of the cabinets on my side table and coffee table were open. And I think the scariest part was my bar stools were still when I passed them. But as I checked the still locked doors, I heard my cat hissing from behind me. Both of my bar stools were spinning. One clockwise and the other counterclockwise. Then it was like someone had grunted in my ear. Mentally, I tried to reason that my boyfriend had come over and was messing with me until I realized he was at his place more than likely asleep and he doesn't have a key. I was still holding my little taser and I hit the trigger and jammed it backwards, hoping to hit whoever was behind me. No sound, 
No, nothing. No one was behind me. I then called my boyfriend, obviously shaken up and not really wanting to talk about it when he asked. But today things picked up a lot more. See, I work night shift, therefore I sleep during the day. I was showering this morning. I live alone with my kitten and my dog. The kitten was in the shower with me because he's weird and my dog was curled up on the mat next to the toilet. I turned around to reach for my soap and it was like someone was standing in the bathroom, pushing their arm through the shower curtain to touch me. I slapped it, not really knowing what to do. I think I made it mad. The curtain flung open and all the hooks came off the shower rod and the whole thing hit the ground. My dog, who was normally tame and a big scaredy cat, started growling and ran out of the room. I decided my hair didn't need to be washed and ran out of the room, completely forgetting about my towel. At this point, I was standing in the living room sopping wet, my dog crying with the kitten on the couch while I slowly spun around. It was like my apartment was alive. Everything seemed to be moving. The bar stools, the Polaroid camera on my coffee table, even the leashes hanging from hooks by the door suede. As fast as it happened, it all stopped. It was quiet for a moment until my pet's food containers flipped over in the kitchen and the water faucets in the bathroom and kitchen turned on full blast. I'd like to note that my kitten has learned how to turn them on so he can sit under the water, which I began to blame on him until I felt him walk up and start licking the water off of my legs. I felt like crying at this point, like this horrible gut-wrenching feeling filled me, like something that felt worse than anything I've ever felt before. That's when I decided I had to go. I started pulling on random clothes that I left hanging over my bar store and I was putting on my pants. I noticed my extremely thick hair wasn't hanging over my head like it should when I'm pulling my still wet body through leggings. A couple strands were lifted like someone was holding them away from my face. I screamed and ran outside holding my kitten and my very large dog in my arms. I could hear what sounded like growling as I closed the door. I sat in my car for about an hour and a half before I went back inside and put my dog in his kennel. When I shut both latches. At this time, I actually left. I was gone for about an hour due to an errand I had to run and when I opened my front door, my dog jumped on me. Mind you, I locked him in his cage. His collar was off, unclipped, and he seemed happy enough. The cat bed and blanket that stayed on top of it was also on the floor and the kennel door was still locked. I was in shock to say the least. My dog's a big boy, very muscular and this escape trick has only happened twice before. Once when I first got him and today being the second. The entire apartment was cold and truthfully, I feel like I've tried everything to try and protect myself and my pets. I'm strong in my faith. I pray every day. I've saged my apartment, as has the paranormal team that came three times, but nothing seems to be helping. But even with all of this, plus the previous stuff I have yet to post about on this, I have to say my bedroom is the absolute scariest place to be, in my very small apartment. If anyone can offer advice or anything, please help me. Some background on the first incident. My dad and I went on a trip across the country to move to a new state. One of the stops on the way would be my dad's uncle. We'll call him Mark. Cabin. The cabin is situated in rural Illinois, about 55 minutes from the nearest town. There are no street markings whatsoever and the nearest neighbour is a good six miles away. Mark is a farmer by trade, so his cabin is surrounded by at least 200 acres of farmland, right in the middle of the Shawnee National Forest. On two sides of the cabin, there's a woodland, so you couldn't walk throughout, and on the other two sides, there are fields of crops. Now, the cabin itself is three stories. The basement just houses a small garage and laundry room. The middle floor is the largest, having Mark's bedroom, the kitchen, the living and dining room and a bathroom. The top floor is just a landing and two bedrooms that connect through a shared bathroom. My dad and I each got one of the bedrooms. The middle floor has a raised deck on three sides that are full of windows and has a massive sliding glass door. And you guessed it, 
When it's nighttime out there, there is absolutely nothing to subset the darkness. You can't see a single thing out of the windows, no matter how hard you try. Now, let's move on to the creepy part. The first night we stayed there, I was sitting on my dad's bed, chatting. He had his window open to ventilate the room, and you could hear lots of movement up from outside on the ground level. Of course, we couldn't see anything. We could only hear trees swaying, branches and dry grass crunching by something walking on it. Don't worry, we assumed it was deer as there were many in the area and went to bed without any issues. The next day comes and goes after my dad and I spent it exploring the area on a UAV. The next night after Mark goes to bed, my dad and I were sitting in the living room watching an old movie on the TV. This was around 9pm and I remember getting this distinctly anxious feeling while sitting there with my dad. I routinely looked through some of the windows that were surrounding it, but as you guessed, I could see nothing but black. Around 10.30, my dad and I got to our appointed bedrooms and he quickly falls asleep. I messed around on my phone till around 1.30. At this point, I shut my door to the point where only a sliver of light is getting into my room and I could barely see out into the dim landing. I plug my phone into the charger and hop into bed, ready to go to sleep. Around 20 or 30 minutes goes by of me trying to fall asleep, and that's when I hear it, clear as day. There's a loud and forceful knock on one of the windows. Three distinct knocks. I shoot up in bed and just sit there for a few seconds, listening and looking out through the small crack in the door. I get up and I'm hit with this overwhelming feeling that I should not open my door and go out. So I end up going through the shared bathroom and into my dad's room. I wake the poor guy up from a dead sleep and tell him that I heard someone's knock on either the glass doors or the windows. My dad gets up and I follow him downstairs and he checks the entire house before locking both of the doors that my uncle always leaves open. After turning on the porch light and checking the house, we found nothing and went back up to our rooms. I'm extremely unsettled but could tell my dad was assuming I had just freaked myself out. The next morning comes around, I go downstairs while my dad is sitting at the table with Mark. Apparently the two had been discussing what I had heard last night. That's when my dad tells me that Mark has heard the same knocking, at the same time of night on three separate occasions. The first time he heard the knocking, he immediately jumped up from bed and grabbed the shotgun he keeps in his closet. He knew there'd be no one or no thing good knocking at the door in the middle of nowhere at 2am. He saw nothing when he looked outside and when the knocking came twice more, he didn't bother checking it. Now Mark is a 73 year old tough cowboy that's straight up, fearless and doesn't find any enjoyment in lying. We left the same day to continue our journey across the states. The second event occurred just last week. My dad was visiting my mom and I in our two bedroom house. He flew out at the city's airport the next day. Due to him being there, I spent the night on an air mattress on the floor of my mom's bedroom while he slept in my bed. My mom's bedroom is in the back of the house with a small backyard and then a sloped six foot wall leading up into the desert being all there was. Around 5am I jolted awake with this extremely loud knock on my mum's bedroom window. I sat up and just stared at the curtain covered window. My mum had already been awake, early riser, and had her earphones in while watching something. She yanked them out and asked me if I had heard it as well. The two of us just sit in silence. She tells me that if she opens the curtains, she just knows that something is going to be staring back at her. I go and wake up my dad, poor dad, and tell him the two of us heard someone at my mom's window. He goes outside and finds nothing, but reports that he heard the dogs barking off and on for a little over an hour. Strange. My mum and I heard no barking whatsoever. The sun comes and goes, and nothing else happens the next night, or any night since then. This happened about seven years ago but I still remember it like it happened yesterday. I was maybe 16 at the time and super into the paranormal. I grew up in the church and was told time and time again that the paranormal did not exist outside of the realm of just demons and angels. 
So, as any curious teenager who had to find out for themselves, my friend and I snuck out to buy a Ouija board. The two of us then drove out and parked on a deserted dirt road so there would be no chance of either of our religious parents finding out what we were doing. Because, as you would assume, a Ouija board was a big no-no. The two of us climbed in the back seat of our car and set out the board. I think about an hour went by of absolutely nothing happening, besides one of us getting jittery and moving the planchet slightly. Then it started moving. It was slow but it gave a year and spelled rape. That was it. We tried to ask questions, but no response. We said goodbye and drove to a grocery store and threw the board away. I looked up the year and sexual assault cases in our area and unfortunately found one. The case happened in the late 1970s, so I couldn't find much information, but I was definitely unsettled and overwhelmingly confused on why this was communicated with us. Went home that night, felt super anxious, and had a hard time falling asleep. But nothing happened. Nothing happened for three weeks following that night. Before I get into what occurred, I need to describe my bedroom at the time. When you come in the door to my room, there's a closet on the left and then my bed is a few feet away, tucked into the corner of the wall. Straight ahead is a big window, and to the right is a desk and dresser. On the left wall, starting at the door and going around to my bed, there was a line of posters and records, with a bulletin board right above the head of my bed. The right side wall is covered with even more. So anyway, I come home from school and go about my business. That night I went to bed, still feeling uneasy, but fell asleep rather quickly. When I wake up in the morning and roll over, I feel multiple sharp stabs on my side. I sat up and saw that the bulletin board had fallen down right next to my head, and the tacks were all over my bed and stabbing into me. I looked around my room and felt chills. The posters and records from the doorway to my bed on the left wall had all fallen off. The ones on the other wall were all still up, not even crooked. I checked around the rest of the house, especially rooms sharing that wall, and nothing else had been displaced in the slightest. So... To me, it seems that something had come into my room, knocked everything off the wall moving towards my bed, and stopped when it was right over my head while I slept. This happened in 2012. I want to give all the context, so I apologise it's long. It was the summer after my freshman year of college, and I was at my parents' house. It's a ranch style house on a hill where you enter onto the second floor through the front door. And there's a staircase that goes downstairs where you can exit to the woods outside the back of the house. My parents were away for work. They worked together and I was planning to pull an all lighter to meet a writing deadline for my internship. It was Saturday and my younger brother, 17 at the time, was planning to go to some big party with a handful of his friends including one of our childhood friends from the Netherlands who was staying with us for the summer. My best friend and I agreed to drop him and his friends off and pick them up. I'll skip ahead to the part when we picked them up from the party. There were five of them from total, the four we dropped off plus another one tagging along who I didn't know, and they were so drunk. I never heard the new kids say a word. We brought them back and they crashed in various parts of the house pretty much immediately. My best friend and I took the California King in the master bedroom downstairs, where I would pull my all-nighter writing once she fell asleep. And one of the friends crashed in the sitting room behind our bedroom. You had to go through our bedroom to get to it. Everyone else was upstairs. My brother was in his room, directly above the sitting room. His other friend was in the guest room, directly above the master. And our Netherlands friend, plus the new kid, actually fell asleep sitting up, leaning on each other, on the couch in the living room upstairs across an open floor plan from the front door slash dining room area. So it's 3am and everyone except me is asleep. I had just come back downstairs after putting on a pot of coffee and had seen the two boys on the couch in the same position they'd been in all night. I got into the bathroom at the foot of the stairs and don't bother locking the door. Just as I sit down to pee, I suddenly hear voices having a conversation upstairs, right near the top of the steps which is also close to the front door. And it's clearly a man and a woman, 
So I assume something went wrong on the trip and my parents have come home unexpectedly. They weren't due back for another couple of days. Fearing they would immediately come downstairs to their room, I run over and lock the bathroom door, then finish peeing, washing my hands, etc. And all the while I can hear this animated conversation upstairs, but can't make out what they're saying, even though it's getting louder and louder. I finish up quickly in the bathroom because I need to go greet my parents and explain why we're in their bed and all these kids, who are surely awake and confused now, at least the ones in the living room, are in the house. So I'm running up the stairs, and the conversation is getting noticeably louder and louder, the closer I get. As I'm a couple steps away from the top landing, they're fully yelling, and the moment my foot hits the top of the steps, silence. I look at the front door and scan the whole dining room and living room area for my parents, no one is there. Everything is exactly the same as it was a few minutes ago when I was upstairs, including the two boys sitting exactly as they were before, fast asleep. I start shaking and my heart starts pounding, keeping my back to the stairs. I go back into the kitchen all the way up to the coffee pot, too scared to turn my back on the area the voices were coming from. With shaking hands, I pour another cup of coffee and stand there in shock desperately trying to rationalise what just happened. At this moment, the friend who was in the guest room comes into the kitchen, barely awake, still drunk, looking for water. I asked, did you hear any of that? And he had no idea what I was talking about. I gave him water and he went back to bed. I told myself the new kid I never heard speak must have a voice like a woman. And him and our friend must have woken up had the conversation, and somehow fallen asleep right when I got upstairs. It didn't make any sense, but I was so terrified, I forced myself to accept it at least until daylight. I went back downstairs, eventually got back to work, and once I finished, I waited until the sun came up to try to get some sleep. A few hours later, everyone was up, and I eagerly said good morning to the new kid to hear his voice. It turned out to be far deeper than anyone else's in the house, and a sharp chill ran down my spine. I asked him and our friend if they woke up and had a heated conversation in the middle of the night, but I already knew the answer. No. In fact, as soon as one woke up and realised they were sleeping on each other, he moved to a different chair. As everyone gathered in the living room, I told them all what happened, and no one knew what to say or had any idea how to explain it. This experience forced me to allow for the existence of the paranormal, ghosts, whatever, because it's been almost 10 years and I still have no explanation. The property borders a wooded wildlife preserve that was originally the home of the Minka tribe, along with the whole neighbourhood and more land beyond that. I'm not sure where this tribe lives today, and don't believe this is even the name they call themselves. I don't know why this thought kept entering my head as I tried to figure out what happened. Maybe because I couldn't make out the conversation? The house itself was only 60 years old or so, and to my knowledge, no one died there. Though the woman who lived there before us swore it was haunted. This took place a lifetime ago, as I was still a kid living with my parents. I recall the event to best of my memory, but the order of such events might be different, so bear with me. The experiences took place during the span of a year or so, and were very traumatic for me, while not being excessively scary for the most. Remember, I was around 12 or 13 years old. We used to live in a big semi-detached house, spanning four floors for a total of 400 meters squared plus garden. I'll skip the basement sounds, as I think those were suggestions of my mind and not worth reporting, Besides, there were unexplained sounds from the basement, which was converted to a playroom, and where I didn't feel the need to spend much time in. Anyway, the ground floor was a living room with a big pendulum clock. It was missing the internal weight to prevent it from ever going off. Decorative, let's say. Kitchen, a service toilet, and a small bedroom for an au pair living with us and taking care of the house. The second floor was the night area, where we had a pe my parents' room, my brother's room, my room and a guest room, which was closed most of the time as unused. The third floor was an attic where we had a table tennis table, a computer, and two small rooms for all the stuff we didn't want to trash. 
I used to spend up my afternoons with friends playing Super Nintendo and stuff. One afternoon, I was still playing on my own as I was in the house with the cleaning lady only. She was in the garden doing some stuff. When I clearly heard the clock going off. It was a busy day, so I didn't pay much attention to it as it was not scary at all. I did mention it during the dinner and I was jokingly deemed as delusional as my father opened it clearly showing that the mechanism was blocked and sounds from it were impossible. I took it like any 13 year old and I left the table pissed off heading to my room. A couple days passed by and one evening I was playing in my room as always while my parents and brother were on the ground floor watching TV. I was on my way to the toilet when I heard a very loud laugh coming from the upper attic level. That scared the living shit out of me as it was so real that I started calling my father in panic saying a man had a very loud laugh in the attic. He rushed up and went up for inspection while I was holding my breath. Again, it was a no-show. Nothing there and I started double guessing if there was something wrong with me. Following these two events, I became not paranoid but reasonably scared. Hence I stopped sleeping with my door open like that would save me from a horde of ghosts. A few nights later, it must have been 3 or 4am, I woke up for no reason. I've always been a light sleeper and I saw the window curtain moving like there would be a significant wind blowing on it. I stood up to close the window just to realise it was perfectly closed and there were no wind nor leaks. This was spooky enough to switch the lights on and wait for the sunrise to show up. In the following months, I tried to ignore minor events like curtains moving while walking to my door, like to inform them that they saw me coming, lights and open doors which I was sure would be closed. Eventually, we moved out due to some financial complications, not to mention that I was the only happy person in my family when that happened. To this day, I'm 40 now, I remember that house with terror. I was never hurt in a material way, so at least I acknowledge that. So in November 2017, I was in the end stages of my pregnancy. Our apartment was heated by a gas fireplace and stupidly, the carbon monoxide detector was in an adjacent room with the door closed. It wasn't until the door opened that we, husband and I, were aware that I was slowly being poisoned. I, went, I was sent to the hospital. While on oxygen, I went into labour and thus began a very horrible ordeal. I can elaborate if needed, but I'm skipping this. Anyways, three things happened. My daughter was born. Something latched onto me while I was in ER for the poisoning. And my husband took a job out of state to support us while getting his career going week one after leaving the hospital. The whole time I'm in the maternity wing, I'm having issues sleeping. Insomnia is common for me, so I didn't think of it too hard. However, every time I started to sleep, I would wake up from a panic attack. This went on for the week I was there and about a week after coming home. Eventually, I was able to start sleeping, but then things started to happen. I lived in the apartment for three years prior with no incidents, mind you. But onwards of week two from coming home, this happened. November 22nd, 2017. Whispering coming from the audio baby monitor. This is a common occurrence from this point forward. December 8th. First unusual cold spot found. Living room was always about 20 degrees warmer than the rest of the apartment. Heater. But suddenly it was freezing in one spot of the room. Never cold there again. December 11th. The baby's mobile battery drained rapidly. This also became common. First set of batteries lasted a month. All following batteries died within 72 hours. Was eventually moved to my mother's house where the mobile operated as intended. January 3rd, 2018. Never felt comfortable being in the house. Felt cold no matter where I was. Started living in my mother's house to avoid being in my apartment. February 17th. Mother's landlord threatens to up my mother's rent if I don't leave. I return home. Was greeted with a horrible stench and was forced to clean my whole house top to bottom to get rid of it. Daughter starts to scream in her sleep. This occurs about once a week. I can't wake her, but she's screaming. Doctors find nothing wrong. April 1st, husband returns home. Everything stops happening. I feel like I'm crazy because no one has witnessed this but me. 
He gets a job at home. Everything seems fine. We live happily. August 6th. While outside on the balcony, the door handle that I had just used with no problem breaks, trapping me outside. While trying to climb down from the second floor, I fall, break my back and end up hospitalised. My aunt moves in to help with my daughter while I recover. Months later, my aunt confesses that from day one of being there, she felt like someone was watching her and was often cold. I was drugged up for two months while recovering, so I don't have much to say. October 27th, we decided to move my daughter into her own bedroom before her birthday. We had the baby monitor, a blanket and a bag sitting on the coffee table when we all stepped outside, husband, aunt, daughter and I, to see our friend in the parking lot. When we returned, the baby monitor was sitting on the floor, three feet away, in an upright position. This is when my husband believed me about what I said while he was gone and my aunt confessed to her issues. October 29th. A doll that had been sitting on a shelf in my daughter's room is sitting up right in the middle of the living room the next morning. My daughter couldn't reach it nor leave her crib. My aunt was sleeping on the couch and heard no one in the night. November 2018 to July 2019. I'm grouping this together because there's too much stuff in the journal. Basically, the house went haywire. I have several days where multiple entries occur. Thumping, lights flickering, bad odours, cold spots, toys turning on by themselves, objects moving, whispering, and my daughter develops nightmares on an almost nightly basis. March 9th, our friend W comes to visit. In a very disturbing way to greet her, the word hello is written on the bathroom mirror from a marker that originated from a separate room. This isn't her first dealing with hauntings, so she replies with, hello, who are you? Later, it replied with, Rick. June 14th, our friend Elle asks to use our apartment to host a party for an MLM since she was a part of. 30 plus people show up throughout the night. One, who has never stepped foot in our apartment prior, commented that the bathroom light kept turning on and off the whole night, even when no one was in there. June 29th, My mother and her boyfriend come to visit. Everyone was drinking and goofing off. Suddenly, the boyfriend demands to go home and leaves without explaining. Later, my mother informs me that he saw a black mass floating around the ceiling, hover around me and move like it was pulling something out of me. He convinces my mom to have a cleansing done. July 1st, evening. My mother, with the aid of her boyfriend and guidance from his friend, performed a cleansing. Drawing everything out of the main door, my daughter screamed the whole time this was happening, but immediately fell asleep once it was done. The house felt still, like frozen in time until sunrise. July 2nd, morning. A black handprint was found on the roof of the outside stairs. Context, I lived in a multifamily home. The stairs to the second floor were outside because the second floor is a separate apartment. From then on, we didn't have anything else happen. We moved out in June of 2020. Two months later, my daughter asked me why we no longer lived in an old house. I told her why and that we're not moving back there. She replied with good. Mr. Black was scary. He wanted to eat my face. So this happened about five years ago now. To this day, I cannot explain what happened to my quiet country neighbourhood, down a dead-end dirt road south of the Oregon border. The following events occurred over a few months, in summer and autumn. It started off with little things. The dogs randomly barked and howled, mine and the homes across the lane. We lived in a fairly rural community, so it was common for pesky animals such as coyotes, raccoons, foxes, or even larger predators to come close in search of livestock or barn cats to eat. So we figured it was just the security team doing their jobs. It wasn't until we realized it would start and stop at the exact same moment. Every dog, either inside or outside, spontaneously going nuts for several homes that we started to raise questions. Another time was when I had come home from town with my mother. We were just unloading the weekly shopping when I needed to use the restroom. I excused myself and heard my mom leave 
come back inside and unpack the last bag and put things away in the pantry. I finished my business, washed up, and heard the back sliding door open and shut. I figured that she was heading out to check on the horses. It wasn't until I left the washroom and went out onto the back deck that I realised something was wrong. My mother, the only other person living in the house, was all the way clear across the pasture, adjacent to our neighbour. She would have had to actually grow wings and fly over that several acre distance in the ten seconds it took me to head down the hall and out the back door. So who was messing around in the kitchen that whole time? It only got stranger from there. A mysterious shadow man kept appearing in people's homes. One time, it even got recorded on the neighbour girl's phone in the background of a video. It took a concerned family member who was watching to notice and ask, Hey, why is there a man in B's bedroom? He would also cross the road at night in front of our headlights. You could hear voices in the house and random knocking on my bedroom door but nobody was there when I'd check. There was one time that my then boyfriend, now my husband and I, were watching a movie in the middle of the afternoon in the living room, and we heard my mom call my name from her room across the house. We paused, I got up, and nearly ran into her as she's leaving her room to come out. Asked me why I was calling her. Jay and I shared dumbfounded looks, and I said I was getting up to see her since she called me. She turned pale, and said no she hadn't. It all came to a head though, when there was a knocking at the front door one afternoon. That same three knocks. It was so forceful that I heard it in my room, and when mom heard it too, she yelled, all right, I'm coming. I figured it was a neighbor coming to talk about a loose animal or something. But then it hit me. The dogs were totally silent. Nobody could ever come up to the front door, let alone pound on it, without our dogs barking. I am halfway across the room when I come to this realisation and a chill runs through me, hard. I rip open my door and dash to the front room where my mom is standing facing an entirely empty front porch. With our wide open driveway, there was no way in hell some random kid could play a prank on us in the middle of nowhere without us seeing them running away or the dust trail from driving off. I took one look at my mom's confused and terrified face and I whistled for our biggest dog to go with me outside to search for anything I could find. The rest stayed in the house with mom. I never found anything, but there was a very heavy weight of being watched. After that, nothing else happened. No more noises, shadows, anything. Though every now and then, I still can't shake that there's something unfinished about it all. To this day, the sound of someone knocking on my door, as innocent as it is, gives me chills. I've always had strange experiences my whole life. I used to think most houses were haunted, but the older I'm becoming, the more I think it's me. I often hear whispers directly in my ear, smell odd things that are unexplained, like perfume, tobacco, herbs, and get the sense of someone watching me see things in mirrors. From ex-boyfriend's houses, friends' houses, the many houses I've moved to, there always seems to be some sort of activity or strange feeling. I've had too many to mention, but I will mention one that stuck with me. It was about five years ago. I was renting a house. It was a very comfortable house and there wasn't much activity. It was in a mining village. I got a strange feeling in the back bedroom, but it didn't stop me going in there. Just a bit uneasy. Anyway, one night I woke up in the middle of the night to go on the loop. I was half asleep and nothing seemed unusual. After I was done, I came out of the bathroom. The bathroom was directly opposite the front room, so you can see right in it. I looked into the front room and saw a man standing there. He didn't look completely solid. I could see through him. I could see the TV behind him. He was short, looked like an adult. I can't remember his clothes, but I can remember his face and he was wearing a flat cap. He had a broad smile and kind eyes. Not that I could see the eyes as normal eyes. There were no pupils or colour. He was all grey. But it was night. And there were no lights. He was looking at me. I couldn't believe what I was looking at and really wanted to make sure it wasn't my eyes playing tricks on me. 
I stood there for a good solid five minutes just staring. I didn't feel scared, just curious. He moved and started looking at the TV. It felt like he was curious about it, like he had never seen one before. I'm 100% sure of what I saw. I spent the time making sure what I saw was correct. After about five minutes, I felt he was doing no harm and meant no harm, and I felt comfortable to go back to bed. I really didn't feel scared, but I have felt scared in other encounters. The scary ones happened more recently. Okay, so it started about two years ago. Fairly short story. I love a bubble bath, my way of relaxing. It has always felt safe and comforting. One night, I was soaking in the bath, nodding off a bit, enjoying the silence. Then all of a sudden, I had the strongest feeling. Mm, when I say feeling, it was like a vision, a flash. That a woman was going to rush into the bathroom and hold me under the water. I can still see her when I think about it. Young, blue eyes, pale, dark hair. I had a vision of her kneeling next to the bath, holding me under. The feeling was so strong, and I felt so scared that I got straight out of the ba bath. After that, I felt a bit uneasy in the bathroom, like she was watching me. I just tried to put it in the back of my mind, tried to convince myself it was a silly thought. Nothing else happened for a few weeks, and I was starting to feel comfortable again. Until one night, I was brushing my teeth in the bathroom, getting ready for bed. There's a huge mirror on the side of my bathroom wall. I glanced in the mirror and I saw her. She had her arms outstretched towards me, like lunging towards me. I could feel a breeze, like the vision was only there for a few seconds, like a flash. I was scared and it stayed with me. That was the second time I'd seen her and she didn't feel friendly. I did what a lot of people do. I spoke to her. I told her firmly that she had no permission to be in this house or to harm me or anyone in it. I repeated this message around the house whenever I felt uneasy and was alone. My partner would think I was crazy. I haven't seen or felt her since. I still feel uneasy in the bathroom. The most recent scary experience was only last year, late last year. I was in bed asleep. I remember I was having a nice dream. Can't remember what it was. Probably about Johnny Depp. <laughs> and I remember I woke up with a start. You know, like when you have that feeling of falling. When I opened my eyes, I saw a man coming towards me. He looked so angry. Again, it only lasted a few seconds. I remember feeling like I needed to protect myself. He was tall, had a dad bod, brown hair, brown eyes, and a pink polo shirt on. I remember closing my eyes and when I opened them again, he was gone. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. After that happened, I spoke aloud that no one, good or negative, was allowed in the bedroom. And I still visualized a barrier across the door, stopping anything from getting in. I also now have a selenite in the room. Nothing has happened in that room since. On a side note, I do have a dog that sleeps in the same room as me and it didn't react. That makes me feel that it could have just been a bit of a dream, you know? Like a dream imprint. It felt very real to me and still does when I think back. Make of these stories what you will. I don't normally have things like this happen and I feel I have a very good grip on my emotions. When I am freaked out because of a film or when it's in real danger, I can understand which emotion is real and which is my mind playing with me. As I mentioned previously, I usually get feelings, smells and hear voices. The stories I've told here are the only times I've seen something. That's three times in just over 30 years. My mother was an actress for decades. From a very young age, I had been in and out of many theatres. I was in on all of the superstitions and behind the scenes stories that honestly were frightening but I couldn't help but listen to what the cast and crew had to say. Theatre people have a way with telling stories. Of course, I had some experiences of my own. Cold spots, the feeling of being watched, and disembodied footsteps or voices. But I had just chalked it up to being a kid with an overactive imagination. Knowing what I know now, 
I wonder if it was more than just that. My imagination. Anyway, following the footsteps of my mom, I began my own artistic ventures at the age of seven. I'm in high school now and have been acting for a decade as of this year. Throughout my career, I've been in hundreds of productions and in and out of countless venues. I'm not giving you this information to brag, so I'm very sorry if it comes off that way. I just wanted to give you an idea of how this particular theatre stands out among the others. This particular instance, I was in rehearsals for a school production of an off-campus venue. I don't want to give out the exact name to protect the company and cast, but I can give you the building's name, nickname, the Wendy. I know it's not an exactly striking or chilling name, but it does personify the building in a way other theatres around town aren't. It's made a name for itself, one of the reasons why can be attributed to the fact that many in my city, particularly among theatre folk, consider the building to be alive in a way. Although the entities that haunt it are very, very much dead. As I grew older, my interest in the paranormal grew, and it's been a fun thing to learn about. Growing up around these stories and places definitely had made me more and more curious. On this particular day of rehearsals, me and a couple of friends decided to ask our director if anything strange had happened recently. It was January, the start of a new year. This was just before our lunch break and we had finished up all of our work for the morning. Our director sighed and said we would think he was making something up or straight up just going crazy, but we insisted we would believe him. He told us that his experience took place that December locking up the theatre after the closing of the Christmas show that year. The only two people left in the theatre were himself and another person from the cast. Only two people, or so he may have thought. As he was walking out of the green room, which is a room where actors wait to go on stage, do quick changes, etc., he heard an ear-splitting cackle that sounded like a classic, stereotypical witch. It was crystal clear and sounded like it came from someone standing directly behind him. He whirled around to find no one. He went in search of the other cast member who was in the office down the hall from the green room. He asked what was so funny to make him laugh like that. The cast member looked confused and it explained he hadn't laughed. No one else was in the theater and he didn't hear anything anyway. It's been quiet since. After our director had told us the story, he excused himself to go out to lunch instructing the cast not to leave a mess in the lobby and not to go into the theatre without an adult. Obviously, my friends and I decided to go in. After we made sure he was gone, we snuck up the stairs. The doors were unlocked, as we expected them to be, and we stepped inside. Since the theatre wasn't in use, all of the lights were off, except the ghost light in the middle of the stage. If you don't know what a ghost light is, Google it to find out more. The history behind them is honestly pretty cool. It was incredible. The theatre holds up to a thousand people. The tiny light wasn't big enough to brighten the entirety of the auditorium, instead casting strange shadows across the audience. The three of us stuck side by side, too scared to walk down the steps towards the stage. As the door shut behind us, it became even darker. We looked around for a little bit from our porch on the steps and eventually started debating whether or not to go into the green room. We talked about our director's story for not even five minutes, when there was a weird lull in the conversation. The air got tense and heavy. Each of us just stared at each other. The hair on my neck stood up. Then, from the green room, across the stage and the rows and rows of seats, we heard it. A loud, bone-chilling cackle. I can't even describe the feeling I had after hearing that absolutely horrid laugh. It was evil, high-pitched like a woman's laugh and truly terrifying. After it had registered that what we all had heard, we stood there in fear, eyes wide, before I broke the silence. Did you hear that? My friend replied, you mean the fucking cackle? So we all heard it? Once it was confirmed we all had experienced the same thing, that we weren't individually going insane, we bolted out of the theatre. The realisation that whatever it was had been listening, waiting for the perfect moment to taunt us, still haunts me to this day. And it's been quiet since.
Earlier this month, I returned home after dropping my sons off at school. Except for our two cats, I was home alone. I was washing dishes in the kitchen while the cats scuttled to and fro in the living room playfully. After a moment, I realised it was curiously quiet. A strange sort of quiet, and I turned away from the kitchen and went in search for the cats. I couldn't find them. I called them and walked around the house. I went through the study towards their favourite window in the front hallway, but they weren't on the windowsill. I turned to go back into the study to see if they were in one of the shelves on the credenza and stopped short. There, in the centre of the doorway between the study and front hall, was an old, thick, heavy encyclopedia-type dictionary, L through Z. I stared at it. It hadn't been there just moments before. I would have seen and or kicked it as I stepped through from the study into the front hall. I left it alone for the moment, stepping over it and back through the study into the living room. From here, I could now see one of the cat's tails under the sofa. This was very strange. They haven't gone under the sofa since they were small kittens. They had to struggle to get under there. I tried coaxing them out, but they wouldn't budge. I left them alone and went back to the dictionary on the floor. It hadn't been there when I stepped through the first time and, in fact, hadn't been there when I tidied up that morning before I started on the dishes. I picked it up and around the corner to the shelf in the front hallway where it belonged. The book is positively archaic and we have it because it was gifted to us more than 24 years ago by my parents, along with an entire set of encyclopedias. For their then future grandchildren, we lugged them around with us each time we moved. As I was mulling over how it came to be there, I heard my phone ring. It was my sister calling to tell me our cousin had a stroke and passed away. My grandparents have always acknowledged that their house was haunted, and I've had several experiences there, and so has everyone who spends enough time at their house, so it's definitely not a secret. Though it's known that both my great-grandparents hang around, my great-grandfather actually passed in the house, and the previous owner of the land is supposed to be hanging around too. More on that some other time. But when I was still a kid, 14 years old, my brother and I had a shared experience in our grandma's art room that also served as our bedroom when we would spend summers with them. My brother, 12 at the time, and I were wrestling around on the bottom bunk of our metal bunk beds when we heard my grandma come down the hall and open the door next to ours. It was the back kitchen slash living room. It was a duplex, but they added a door to connect the two houses once my uncle was injured and they needed access to both parts of the house. Where they kept my other uncle's dog because he had fleas. Sad, I know. But they would go to the back to let him outside. We heard her and George, the dog, walk down the hall and the door of my uncle's room opened and closed. To get to the hallway, he had to go through the front kitchen and my uncle's room to get to the back hallway. My brother and I thought nothing of it because it was normal for us to hear the back and forth foot traffic in the hall, either to the bathroom, the closets, or the back kitchen slash living room. But not long after my grandma and George had left, probably five minutes or a little more, we weren't really paying attention because we were too busy goofing off. We heard a knock on the bedroom door. We stopped playing and looked at each other for a minute because we hadn't heard my grandma and George come back and it was too soon for her to be letting them inside again. We said come in and heard the sound of the baby gate scraping. My grandparents put the baby gate up so my grandma could leave the door to her art room open without the animals getting in. Mainly the fat cats that were allowed to go anywhere but the art room. And we both saw the doorknob turn. It was one of those bar ones I really don't know what they're called or how else to describe it. And the door swung open, but no one was there. We both panicked and ran down the hallway because there was no way anyone could open the door and just disappear before the door swung open. The hall was just too long and we would have heard the footsteps on the old echoey hall floor. We found my grandma in the front living room playing games on a Kindle like she loves to do. And even though we already knew it couldn't have been her or my granddad, who was asleep in their bedroom connected to the front living room, since they took shifts such for my uncle who's handicapped, and my granddad was always on the night shift before we passed two years ago. 
We asked her if she had tried to play a prank on us and that it wasn't funny. She asked us what we were talking about and we told her that I've already written above. Without skipping a beat, she told us we shouldn't be scared because it was just our great grandma, Marion, my granddad's late mother, and that she was just saying hi and checking up on us and that she does the same for my grandparents by turning the TVs on and off randomly and would do so persistently until whoever was experiencing it said hi and told her everything was all right before letting them go back to whatever they were doing, usually sleeping. But needless to say, it still freaked my brother and I out pretty badly and we decided to stay up front with grandma for the rest of the day and for a week or so after that, we refused to go to bed by ourselves and would wait until the other sibling was ready for bed before going back to the room to sleep. Looking back, none of the experiences anyone has had in the house has been scary, so it feels foolish to have let the experience scare us so badly, but we were still just kids. And the idea of our great grandma coming to check on us, especially without us being able to see her, scared the living hell out of us. Back in 2013-14, I lived in a house with three other roommates. In this house, I can recount dozens of seemingly paranormal experiences, ranging from scary to odd to almost normal. But this one really stands out to me the most because I've never been able to figure it out. One night, I was in bed with my boyfriend in my room. We went to sleep early-ish because we both had work in the morning. We were both asleep, but suddenly, not sure of the time, my boyfriend woke up gasping and freaked out. He's almost yelling, there was a face right there, a face. It was getting in my face. I'd never seen him so terrified. He was always such a relaxed guy. He was sitting up in bed, sweating and breathing hard. I figured he just experienced sleep paralysis. It would have been his first. I tried to calm him down and he eventually went back to sleep. I rolled over in bed and was trying to get back to sleep but I'm the type of person who can't just go back to sleep after waking up. As I'm laying there, I start hearing tapping in threes around the room. The first two times, I thought that the tapping was just the house settling, but the tapping in threes would change locations and pitch every time. It would be above the bed on the ceiling and go tap, tap, tap. Then it would be next to my head on the wall. Bed was next to the wall. Tap, tap, tap. Then it would be by the bore. Tap, tap, tap. Then on the other wall, tap, tap, tap. Then on the floor, tap, tap, tap. This went on for a while, but I'm not sure how long. It felt like hours to me. I was honestly so scared that I didn't open my eyes or even move. I just stayed frozen under my blanket. The next thing I knew, it was morning. I asked my boyfriend if he remembered the nightmare and he said yes. I don't remember if I asked him about the tapping. The first thing I tried to explain it with was some sort of pest, like a rat or bug. But I don't understand how it could travel so fast, or make such strong taps. And we never had any pests in the house, to my knowledge. I'm what I consider a very regular man in my early 30s. I have a stable job. I'm in a solid and happy relationship. I enjoy traveling and eating out, gaming, hiking, and culture. But my entire life, I've experienced something which I have called life bleeding. I've really struggled to find anything similar online, so I decided to put the sensation out into the open world to see if anyone else has experienced something similar. It's a very broad yet subtle sense of memory and emotion. So apologies in advance if there's not much to go off. Every now and then, it could be minutes apart, weeks, months, or maybe even years, I get this sensation out of nowhere that I'm living another life. This life could be happening parallel to mine or in the past, but I've never had the sensation of anything happening in the future. It's also never the same life I'm feeling when it happens. The feeling itself is super hazy. I'm fully aware and in control of everything I'm doing in the present as myself but my mind and memories for a brief moment open up. The most similar sensation I can describe it to is deja vu, 
that it's just I'm experiencing something from a different place, perspective, and from a different being. That's neither happening now or has happened. The events themselves are mostly mundane. It could be someone driving somewhere, eating a meal, or having a conversation. But I have had occasions where I've experienced traumas, such as bereavements or physical harm. I want to clarify that this isn't just me thinking and imagining these things, at least I don't feel I am. It always feels so distant in my mind, and it's a struggle to bring it into closer view. It's just something I've had with me for as long as I can remember, where for a second or two, my life is bleeding into someone else's and vice versa. My family believes in the paranormal. Growing up, they would tell me stories about past experiences in the family. There were stories that ranged from a ghost in the garage of my aunt, to the more spectacular stories, such as about a painting that my grandmother had bought on a market that was supposedly haunted and would eventually take the life of one of the 11 grandchildren. All are great stories, worthy of their own post, but I always took their stories with a grain of salt. I was always very interested to hear them, but I never truly believed them completely. That would change. My grandmother lived in a grand old farmhouse from the late 18th century, with a big and beautiful garden. My mother grew up in that house and would tell me that she believes the house to be haunted. My grandmother, mother and aunts have all seen a woman in white at some point during their lives there. When we stayed over as a kid, we never wanted to walk through the house alone, especially at night when we had to go to bed. You would always have the feeling of being watched when roaming the halls. Luckily, nothing more than that ever happened and growing up, I just chalked it up to me being just a kid. Four years ago, my grandmother's health started rapidly declining. Instead of bringing her to a nursing home, we decided to take her into our house. She still lives with us to this day. Her mental health started getting worse after living with us for a year. Because of this, we decided it was time to sell her house that had remained untouched. We put the house on the market and after a year, we had found a buyer. Before the sale, we went to the house a couple of times with the family to do some maintenance but nothing out of the ordinary happened during any of these events. Then came moving day. We had a small trailer and were going back and forth between houses, moving all of the furniture out. By the end of the day, only me and my stepdad were still moving. There was only one more piece of furniture to move, a big closet from the bedroom that we had just disassembled. Unfortunately, the trailer was already completely filled and we would need to come back to pick up the closet. We placed the closet in the entrance hall and drove off to unload the trailer. We came back to the house about 30 minutes later. When we opened the door, we saw that a plate from between the wooden beams in the ceiling, above where we placed the closet, had fallen to the floor. I thought it was weird, but I didn't really think about it and went to start moving the closet to the trailer. When we got to the closet, we both see a necklace of a cross laying on top of it. That necklace definitely was not there before we left. The closet was completely disassembled and carried sideways down the stairs. If it was there before, it would have already fallen off. It either was on top of the ceiling plate that fell and landed perfectly on the closet, or it was placed there. In hindsight, this isn't a smart move, but we took the necklace home to show it to my mother and asked my grandmother if she had seen the necklace before. We got home and instantly I told mom about what had just happened and showed her the necklace. We had a door the Explorer doll on our desk in the kitchen for my sister's children. And I kid you not, when I showed my mother the necklace, the doll of the opposite side of the room started speaking her voice lines. Weird, but okay, coincidence, I guess. We asked my grandmother if she had seen it before, but she hadn't. A few days passed and I was going to be home alone for a week. Nothing had happened since, so I was already starting to forget about the necklace. Everything was fine for the first few days. On the third day, I decided that I was going to take advantage of being home alone for a week. I put on a movie, rolled up a joint and lit it inside my room. The moment that I exhale the first puff of smoke, I hear the loudest bang that I've ever heard knock on my door. I immediately freeze up in terror, knowing that I'm home alone and that we have kept the creepy necklace that we found at my grandmother's house. Time goes by, about 30 minutes, I start to relax again. But I haven't yet tried to smoke again. 
continued watching the movie when a scene made me laugh a little. The second I made a sound, another loud bang knocked on my door. It sounded like someone punched the door with all of its power. I froze up again. After about a minute, I mustered up the courage and decided to see what could have caused it. I opened the door but saw nothing, inspected the door but couldn't find anything. For the rest of the week, I felt watched when I walked inside the hall. I could feel where it was watching me from, but I never actually saw something. When my mother got me home, I told her everything and demanded that the cross would be thrown away. I tried to show her how loud the bang on the door is by punching it with full force, but shockingly, I never managed to get a bang as loud as the ones I heard that day, even though I'm a pretty strong guy. She agreed to throw away the cross, and she got rid of it. I believe that the ghost from my grandmother's house was attached to that cross, and that it had followed us when we took the necklace home. Ever since then, I became a complete believer that there is something more to life than what we can see. If there's one thing you can learn from the story, don't take the creepy necklace home. I was about eight when this happened. Me and my parents were living in a nice two bedroom house with a full furnished basement. My dad would be down there often, which is why one day I went down there. One of the lights was on so I could see half of the basement. But my dad wasn't there. But there was another man though. I remember him clearly. Balding, round glasses, soft face. I'd never seen him before, but I was afraid of him. He didn't speak at all. He just stood in front of me, looking at me. It was a weird feeling, but I made my way back up to the stairs and didn't tell anyone for a few years. I told my grandmother for the first time, explained the man and how he was just standing there. She was more surprised than I thought she would be, considering that I assumed it was just my imagination. She asked me to describe him, and she was even more surprised when I did, but not entirely scared. She told me that I described my uncle perfectly, a man who I had never seen a picture of before. He was my grandfather's brother, making him technically my granduncle, who died when my dad was around 13, meaning that I had never had the chance to meet him, since I was over 10 years yet to come. My grandmother thinks that my uncle just wanted to meet me, since he never got a chance to while he was still alive. Another thing I remember is my dad always talking to himself while he was in the basement, a habit he still has and that I picked up on heavily. I wonder if my dad ever saw or spoke to his uncle down there while we still lived in that house. This was my only encounter with my uncle or a ghost in general. I've lived in this house since I was eight. I'm 19 now, and I always knew there was something off about this place. From the cold spots randomly appearing in my upstairs, to the slightest movement of anything hanging around my house. I always figured there was a ghost here. I eventually started calling this ghost Patrick, a namesake given after a dickhead I knew in my high school, mainly given since he was being quite a dick to us in the house. He didn't like that much, restoring to such messages as fucking with the lights on random occasions, to even going so far as to push in my ribs, I couldn't breathe. I still have an indent from where he pushed my ribs in very badly one time. Eventually, I'd had enough of his torture, resorting to using a typical ghost app, I know, how original, to try to ask him a few questions. Firstly, I asked his name, to which he replied with Charles. I addressed by the name he'd given, feeling a tinge of cold running behind my neck. After asking a few more questions, is there anyone else here? No. Where did you come from? King Mass, London. How did you die? He didn't answer that one, etc. I eventually went to turn in for the night. I jokingly said goodnight to Charles, to which the app said bye back. I had a few nightmares that night, so I kept waking up and going back to sleep constantly. It was annoying, and upon the fifth try, I had my hand sticking out in such a way that the palm was sticking up toward the ceiling. An intense cold rushed over it, my fingers suddenly curled together as if someone were holding it, and that's when I realised as I was drifting off that Charles was holding my hand, probably seeing how I was having such a shit time sleeping in an attempt to hold me. And you know what? It actually did help. I went back to sleep without any problems after that, 
Waking up the next morning, only to find that he must have left at some point, since there no longer was a cold. There wasn't anything on a Charles from London that used to live in this house, as far as I could research. I don't know if that's truly his real name. But for whatever reason, ever since I started calling him that, he's left me in the house alone, only appearing when I call for him. It was a December night, very windy night. A lot of dust was in the air. My brother and I were going to eat at the restaurant, which is far away from my home, around 30 minutes away. We don't eat outside, but for that day it was special because we dropped corns out of fields at that day and we were tired, so we decided to let's go and eat outside. The place I live in is really lonely and spooky at night because fields and fields everywhere and the woods though we've been living there for years, but nothing really scary about it. Anyway, we reached the restaurants and we had a really nice dinner. Strangely, there were no customers except us. I don't know, but the lady from the corridor was staring at us for some reason. Though we talked and enjoyed ourselves, we finished our dinner. After finishing our dinner, my brother asked who will drive the way back home. I definitely didn't want to drive because I felt exhausted and sleepy and he was feeling the same. And we fought for it, but I couldn't win, so I decided to drive. I was driving us home, and about 10 minutes of our way yet to be, and my brother who was sitting behind me screamed my name in a demonic voice, and I pulled my brakes and freaked out. I got off the bike and was about to punch my knuckles on his neck, but he pointed his hand in the woods and said, look. And I looked in the woods, and I saw two bright eyes. I was scared, but my brother seemed okay. He wasn't even scared seeing that on this empty dark road going from the woods. So I turned my flashlight on and beamed it in the woods, and I saw a small lamb-like size of a bag. And my brother just started walking towards it without saying anything, and he grabbed the lamb and asked me, I want pet. At this night, I was super worried and was in a hurry, so I let him. I can clearly see my brother's obsession over that lamb. I started my motorcycle again and started to drive home and I had a really bad feeling about this rabbit. After a few minutes, I sensed that we were slowly getting surrounded by clouds because I couldn't see. And I saw my brother whispering something to that lamb. After a while, I started feeling something odd, like something wasn't right. I felt something heavy and I saw my motorcycle speeding down strangely. I saw brakes aren't pressed though. When I turned back on my right side, I saw Lamb with five feet long legs laying on right of my side. I never seen anything like that. I never seen five feet of Lamb's leg. I doubted that and I rechecked, but this time I turned back with left side. I again saw large, scary five feet long legs. I could see symbols on its head. I really, really got scared. My body went cold. I couldn't drive because it was something odd I've never seen in my life. I told my brother who was sitting back on the motorcycle, I told him to throw it away because at this point, my bike was really slow. Because I didn't know if that thing was gaining its size unnaturally. He didn't want to let it go. I was scared. I screamed, throw it away. And he heard that I knew he was possessed at some point and he threw it. And I felt my bike like a cloud. I could speed up. And I turned around and saw a goat faced demon who was about to fly. I didn't turn back after that. I accelerated my bike like Godspeed and I know my brother just witnessed something of natural itself. He couldn't speak properly for three days. I drove us home, I locked everything and we together were super terrified by the event. We didn't sleep. We hugged each other all night. Later that night and saw two very bright white colored eyes peeking through our window. I don't believe in God, but that night I was begging all gods to come and protect us from that thing. The next morning, we met a few people who were locals and bandits and talked about that event. And they told us that we were really lucky that he didn't choose us. The place where we found that lamb was materialized with witchcraft, lockets and the size of human voodoos. Not sure if this is true or hoax, but we were baptized by locals and trying to forget the event we've just been through.
My room at the time was decently big. I'd say about 14 by 10 feet across. Now I was going to bed and I dropped some stuff from a snack run in a plastic bag against one side of my room opposite of my bed. And I was sleepy, so I decided to go to bed. One important thing to note is I only had one previous paranormal thing happen in the house. And it was almost seven years prior to this. And it was voices from the main floor, which I heard from the basement. Back to what happened. So I'm passing out and about what feels like two or three hours after falling asleep. I didn't check the clock. I hear that plastic bag moving. I thought maybe one of my family members was getting into my snacks. So I was about to roll over and scold them. Right before I do, I hear the most blood curdling growl in my ear. Like a cross between a bear and a big dog. And I was close enough I could feel the humidity of its breath. Nobody in my family could make a sound like that, nor would anyone do that to one another. Anyways, I'm on my side still paralysed, but the weirdest part right after I hear the growl, the bag continues moving as though somebody is rifling through it. This continues for probably 10 minutes or so, it felt like hours, till I pass out again. Honestly, I was so tired from a long day, I crashed hard. I worked at construction back then. The following morning, I woke up to not only see the bag moved about 4 or 5 feet, but its contents moved around in the bag. I've got a very good memory, especially when it comes to judging environments etc. Needless to say, I just about jumped out of my skin. 10 years later, I still remember what it sounded like. The fear of being so powerless, so resigned to fate. Guess I'll die, comes to mind. Now since that happened, I feel like my body sleeps with one eye open. This kind of feeling of fear was not something I've ever felt before since then. It does help that I'm a bigger dude, 6'1", about 190 pounds back then. But to feel so overpowered really cuts at the core of your being. Now this was the only encounter that truly scared me. I was doing laundry and the light flicked off. I looked over and see a hand and at the top of what I thought was my dad's head. Our family dynamic is a little roughhousing with the parents when I was growing up. So I was running over to pester my dad. Well, to my shock, nobody was there. I searched that basement low and high. Nobody but me. I bolted upstairs after and I got my dad. We cleared the basement a second time. This time I was armed with a knife. Like that would do anything. Nothing. Again. Laundry again, but this time, I had my laundry next to the switch, and I was putting hangers on them, folding, etc. Suddenly, I feel a breathy whisper in my right ear. I flip around, and there's an older gentleman with a striped red and white shirt, horizontally striped, with jeans about four feet away from me. I glanced at him long enough to know it wasn't somebody I knew, and booked it. Thinking back on it, he looked so neutral, almost confused. Anyways, got my dad again, and we did a full clear again. Nothing. Again. It's also important to point out there is no way to get in or out of the basement without the whole house knowing, as the stairs are super loud and the basement windows all have bars which are all locked. Also, there's no way he would have been able to get behind me, as I was just working there. Also, the space between me and the entrance would have led him to bumping into me as it's only about half a foot due to laundry baskets and clothing piled there. I have a fair amount of encounters, but these are some ones I remember well. So my grandpa died because of cancer on New Year's 2021. And it was shock because he didn't feel sick before and doctors found out he had last stage and there's no way to help him. Only he can live a little bit longer, but he would suffer a lot and at the end he died one month after diagnosing cancer. We spent one week at grandma's house because she's lonely now and we wanted to be her support and day after my grandpa died, my dad was sleeping on the couch and he woke up because someone was walking next to him and he thought that it's my grandpa, but he turned the lights on and there was literally no one and he heard loud footsteps coming to the kitchen at 3am. My grandpa was always up at hours like this and ate food late at night. He told us in the morning what happened, and same night, I had a dream with my grandpa, 
where he came home from the forest, and we all were in shock because we thought he's dead. And he looked younger in my dream, and my aunt had a dream with him too, where he looked younger too, and she woke up from the dream at 3.40am. Coincidence? Same night, my dad heard footsteps at 3am. My aunt had a dream at 3am, and I had the same dream, but I don't know the time. This isn't everything why I believe he's still here. This happened after like four or five days after he died. Only me, dad and aunt had experience with him and no family member saw him in dream or something before. My mom was sleeping with my younger brother in the room where there's a PC and my grandpa very often used PC late at night. My mom woke up exactly at 3.15am because something woke her up and told her in head to look at PC and boom, Exactly when she looked at the PC, it turned on. She called me and grandma to come and see what happened. And we had feeling like someone is there. But for me, it was creepy because it was 3 a.m. And then we started to pray. And mom told me to turn off PC because she wanted to sleep then. I turned it off and after a few seconds, it literally turned on again in front of me. Also, after this, PC turned on second time. My grandpa didn't have a classic keyboard, but it had red lights. And all of a sudden they started flickering and this was crazy too. After that, my other family members started to have signs from him too. For example, his smell, etc. Also, last thing to say, my grandma was alone after we left. And she was very sad and thinking about grandpa. And then her glass cracked for no reason. I want to preface this by saying the house itself is only about 15 years old. I'm not very versed on haunting, so I don't know if it could be the area beforehand that was haunted, or a spirit being attached to the place. I digress. I'll list all that I can remember. Probably the most significant was my father hearing the voice of his deceased friend shout up to him from downstairs. He said he heard him clear as day and walked down expecting to see him. This happened not long after we moved in, 15 years ago. He also heard people generally speaking in the other room. He, my sister and I have all heard footsteps upstairs that sounds like kids ones, light and running around. My siblings sometimes visit, so you would think it was them if they were here, but I live alone most of the time. I felt someone tap my shoulder while I was eating, turned around to expect to see someone and then realized I'm still alone in the house. I heard what sounded like a whisper screaming in my ear once as I was half asleep in the morning. I thought this could have just been high-pitched wind, but even last night I heard what sounded like a woman's voice in my ear, before I sleep, say something unintelligible. My younger sibling says she gets bad vibes from the house and doesn't like sleeping alone when she's here. I've heard things move in the kitchen. Recently, my father walked through the front door, expecting mail and there was nothing. He said he heard someone slip a package through the letterbox and it hit the ground. I was woken up by a loud bang downstairs one morning. I went downstairs with a massive night watchman torch expecting someone to be there but there was nothing. This one could perhaps be down to a window being opened upstairs but still no idea what could have caused the bang. Even this morning I was woken up by the sound of the doorbell but it was too early for the postman. I shrugged it off and went back to sleep. My mother and two older brothers would visit my auntie and three cousins around Christmas. The whole family would get together too. Uncles, aunties, you name it. Anyway, they lived up near Inverness in Scotland, in a place called the Black Isle. It's actually in a place called Cromarty, but Inverness is more well known, so I'll say that. The Black Isle was said to be used back in the day, as a place where witches would meet up on Halloween and perform satanic rituals. Animal sacrifices, that sort of thing... Whether or not that's true is another story. I'll get to the story now. We all rented out a holiday home just down the road from my cousin's house. It had multiple bedrooms in it, so perfect for a lot of guests. Me, one of my older brothers and his friend from Africa were all staying in one room. They were fast asleep, but I was not. I woke suddenly and I didn't know why. I scanned the room with my bleary eyes. It was very dark. I couldn't hear anything but the snores from my brother and his friend. The door to the room slowly opened with a creak, I swear to God. I froze with fear, 
I didn't see anything enter through it. But as I tried to scan my eyes around the room, I started to see shadow-like figures pulsating and hovering around the two adjacent beds. Hovering and pulsating over my brother and his friend. There must have been at least three of these figures. The third one stood over my bed, although this apparition didn't have any human-like features, except for maybe the shape of something human. I could feel like it was staring right at me. I decided then the only course of action was to turn over to face the wall and go to sleep. The morning after, I told my experiences to a few of my family members, and they joked that it might be witches that performed those rituals in the past and generally didn't believe me. Except one person, my brother's girlfriend. She told me she experienced something as well. She was only sleeping next door and she told me she felt like someone sat down on the end of her bed at night and said she could feel the weight of someone on her legs, but nothing was there. Very frightened by this, I decided to read the guest book to see if anyone else reported anything else weird and unusual, but nothing of the sort was there. I'll never forget what I saw that night, and if you're ever up near the Black Isle or stay in the same holiday home I did, just be aware of any strange figures entering your room at night. This experience happened to me around a year ago. I had just moved into a new apartment with a few roommates. We'd been there about a month or two at most at this point. I had just come home from an excruciatingly taxing day at work. I walked through the door to the apartment and realised that nobody was home. Awesome, I thought. I dropped all my stuff by the door, pet the cat, grabbed a towel and got into the shower. It was one of those days where you just kind of sit down in the shower and just let the water pelt you. Just let the muscles relax a bit. I was in the shower for not more than five minutes before I heard a loud bang on the bathroom door, followed by the jiggling of the doorknob. Naturally, I'm shocked. The bang was loud enough to sound like a gunshot went off. It was too loud to be the pipes. It sounded like someone tried to kick down the door. I'm thinking, did someone break in? And I then made an executive decision. If I'm going down, I'll go down disorienting them. So I jump out of the shower and rip open the door while unclothed, and there's nobody. Not a single person was there. I grab my towel and I start checking the rooms, windows and doors. Still nobody home. All the doors locked. All windows still intact. Hell, even the cat was still asleep. I reluctantly go back to the bathroom to finish my shower and don't think anything of it. Later that night, I'm just chilling in my room. Still nobody home. I left my door open for the cat just in case it wanted to come hang out in my room. My roommate's room was almost directly outside of mine to the right and I heard the cat in the hallway just hissing and angrily meowing at their room. The door was closed so I'm thinking what the hell could she possibly be meowing at? I walk up to the esper and I say what's wrong sweetie? There's nobody in there. And as soon as I say those words something falls and clatters onto their bedroom floor and the cat bolts away. Just in case someone had gotten home without my knowledge, I knock on their bedroom door. I get no answer. I peek into their room and there's a bunch of CDs on the floor seemingly ripped off their disc rack. I pick them up and put them back and leave the room. I leave the door open this time just to make sure I'm not being crazy if it happens again. My fiance stopped by not an hour later after she'd just gotten off of work. We were chilling in the living room just watching TV and talking. From the way the apartment was set up, if you're sitting on the couch, to the left you can see all the way down the hallway and into my roommate's room if they had their door open, which it was for now. My fiancé got a sudden chill and to my left I can just see out the corner of my eye, an all black silhouette of a man just standing in the doorway. I turn to look at him and he walks away to the right, where their closet is. I ran to their bedroom and slammed their door shut. I look at my fiancé and say, did you see that too? She nods her head with a scared look on her face. And I tell her we're just going to leave for a while. We grab our stuff and head out. I call my roommates later and ask them if they've ever experienced any weird stuff since we moved in. They told me that sometimes while I'm at work, they hear people talking in my room, even though nobody's there. Needless to say, I'm happy I don't live there anymore.
So I moved into my current house around a year ago after falling out with my previous roommates. It's a tiny house, built probably around 1922, and you can tell. It's had little renovations since then. A lot of it needs work, but it's really cozy. My fiance and I have been here for close to a year now. Since moving in, we've experienced paranormal activity that resembles something of a cat, which is hilarious to us. And we're not alone in this. We've actually had more than a few people confirm to us that they've either seen said cat or have felt the presence of one. Going back to the first few experiences we had, it would just be seeing a little black ball dart around corners or even up the stairs. One day, my fiance and I were sitting on the couch watching TV. From my living room, the dining room is to the right if you're sitting on the couch and you can see clearly into it. So we're chilling after a long day of deep cleaning the house and there was a paper towel roll just sitting in the middle of the table, standing straight up. As we're watching TV, the roll just flies off the table. Well, not flies, more like just fell. Which was weird, because it was directly in the middle of the table and nowhere even close to the edge. So it was more like batted off. I get up, pick it up, put it back where it was and go back to what I was doing. I don't think anything of it. Some ten minutes later, it happens again. So now I'm wondering what's happened. I'm thinking, was it wind? So I start crossing off things it could have been. It's the dead of summer. So is the window unit AC on? No. Ceiling fan? No. Nothing. There was no reason for it to just be falling on the floor. Regardless, I shrug it off as just maybe it was some weird gravity phenomenon, or maybe the simulation of life is glitching. Later that week, we had a friend over. He's never really been over and we never told him about the experiences my fiancé and I had. As soon as he walks in the door, he kind of does this weird sidestep slash step over manoeuvre. So I ask, what was that? And he goes, I thought I was going to step on an animal for some reason. And of course, there was nothing there. A couple hours later, my fiancé and I and our friend are eating dinner at the table and an empty grocery bag in the kitchen falls from the bag of bags. Everyone else does this, right? Do you all save bags? And it just kind of sits there for a minute, deflated. Then it just opens up. Like something crawled in it. And the top starts batting around unnaturally, like it's being played with. We all hear this and watch it happen for a few seconds. And then the bag returns to its deflated state. And we're all just like, what was that about? Because again, it didn't look like wind. Wind would have made the bag move around the kitchen more. So we now tell him about our previous experience, and we all come to the conclusion that it's most likely a cat. So we settle on the most cliche name ever. We name it Catspa. I spend a few minutes making fun of the name and ridiculing its antics. And later that night, around 4am-ish, I woke up to the sound of something moving on my bedside table. I brush it off as just sleep delirium and try to go back to sleep. Then I just feel the gentlest whack on my head like a paw swatting at me. Then I hear something jump on the floor and skitter down the stairs. This time I jump up, turn on the light and investigate. Nothing. Not a single animal in the house. I know for sure it wasn't a house or anything. I exclaim, all right, you win, you can stay. Another time we had a few friends over and someone who we didn't know who'd shown up with another friend asked my fiance, hey, can I meet your cat? And of course we tell her the whole shebang and she goes, huh? I thought you guys had a cat. I saw it run up the stairs. And we're just kind of like, yeah, it does that. So now we just have a ghost cat. And whenever I give it a lot of shit for being a shithead, one of our decorative fake cactuses will just fall from one of the shells for no reason. But on good days, we feel a gentle brush up against our legs when we're sitting on the couch and an overall sense of comfort from the house. We've never felt anything malicious or had any other bad experiences living here. Just the cat. According to our landlady, the previous tenants had a lot of pets. It's entirely possible one of them passed and their soul just stuck around. I'm not complaining. The next time it swats my head in my sleep, I'm getting the ghost cat spray bottle. My mum bought a house when I was in second grade. It was built in 1856 or 1857, I'm not entirely sure. The guy who built it was a prominent doctor. He had a few kids. I don't know a whole lot about him, 
but I know over the years a couple of people died there, mostly him and his kids. But we got the house because the woman living there, her sister died and she wanted to move into a nursing home. The house wasn't used to treat patients as far as I know. There was a hospital built maybe 80 yards from us, where I'm fairly sure he did most of his work. I know that place is very haunted, but nothing malicious as far as I know. Anyways, I feel like that's enough background about the house. We lived there in the early 2000s. I was 6 or 7, and we moved out when I was 13. We didn't live there for a very long time. The house just seemed to be bad luck. We had a dog named Snowball. He was an American Eskimo dog. 20 pounds, fluffy and white as snow. He would just stare in dark corners a lot, as would my cat. I'd hear my mom call for me a lot, but when I went to look for her, she wasn't home from work yet or hadn't called for me. A few times we'd be in the kitchen or living room and we'd hear something digging around my shoe boxes full of Polly Pockets. My bedroom was directly above the living room and the floor was thin. When we'd go upstairs to look for the cat or dog, they were usually there in the living room with us. The cat liked to stay under the couch, but when we would investigate, all my dolls and accessories would be thrown about my room and the door was closed. Snowball liked to chew on my dolls as he had a gum disease and I guess it felt good. But he really didn't like being alone and his favourite spot was on the green couch where he could look out and watch the street. He was also old and only went upstairs when it was cold and we would all sleep in one room. He liked the theatre, as did my cat. She was often very close to us. She liked the spot on the red couch where she would watch TV. None of the pets liked going upstairs unless we were there. I spent a lot of my time outside, but I also liked to sit in the office and I would play Neopets, RuneScape, and watch videos on various sites. I feel like someone was watching me all the time. I'd turn around and I was alone. Sometimes when I was outside, I knew my mom was still at work. But in her bedroom window, I'd see a man looking down at me. I don't remember being afraid of him, just mind used to seeing him. Mom always said it was just Dr. Green. I'd wave to him and he would just vanish. One night I woke up and someone was sitting on my bed and it was freezing as they were pulling my blanket down. I woke up mad, then panicked, because pulling at my blanket was the man in the window. And I could smell it. Something was burning. I woke my mom up and we found that the microwave was shorting out and had burnt through the cable and was on the verge of catching fire. After that, I made my grandma take me to his grave and I'd leave flowers for him all the time. Dr. Green was a nice ghost. He would just appear and he woke me that one time. Then there was Luke. Luke was malicious. He terrorised the pets. It's why they wouldn't really go upstairs. He always appeared in dark corners and I could never bring myself to walk past him. It felt like if I did, something bad would happen. He was more active too. Cabinets would fly open, things would fall off shelves and he would throw things at us. In the dead of night, you could hear heavy boots slowly climb the stairs. Sometimes the TV would randomly flip channels. You would hear groans and he actually attacked us. I regularly had nightmares and would wake up with strange bruises, cuts and scratch marks. This was also happening to my mom. We know his name was Luke because my mom used to record QVC and this sewing channel on the VCR. I think it was QVC and they were doing some craft thing, but they asked the caller what their name was and very clearly, in a masculine voice, someone said Luke. Then the woman who was live on the show goes on to say her name and go on about the product. We're only guessing that the friendly ghost was Dr. Green, as the man always appeared in similar clothing to the photos we had of him. Very nice suits and a hat. Luke was dressed in ratty looking clothing and he wore huge boots with spurs. I can still hear the boots clanging up those squeaky steps. Lastly, there was the ghost dog. I love animals, but I hated this dog. It was huge, black, and made me feel sick to my stomach when it would appear. It also appeared everywhere. Outside, the carport, downstairs, upstairs, and especially the cellar. I could hear its toenails clack on the hardwood, and I would hide under my blankets. The hair on my arms and neck would raise, and I could hear it sniffing me. It makes my skin crawl to think about that dog. If you looked at it, it would growl and vanish. 
but I only saw it maybe twice. I heard it all the time though. I'd also have nightmares about this huge black dog following me around. It was a reoccurring dream that scared me so much as a kid. I'd be in the yard and there was a creek that ran through our yard. It went under the road and there were those huge steel cylinders that let the water pass. I could crouch and walk through them. But I'd see the dog there and it was guarding what looked like a kid's body. It would immediately wake me up. I never thought to look up and see if a kid had died there. I was a kid and it scared me to think about it, but I still see that dream vividly. I own a big black lab Great Dane mix and sometimes it gives me flashbacks to that dog. I could go on and on about odd things that happened. More happened to my mom, and she has weird pictures, videos and even called a priest to cleanse the house, but I don't think it ever helped. It may have, but the people who live there now have fixed up the house a lot. I've been tempted to knock on the door and ask them, but I feel like that would be weird. I drive past the house every time I go visit my grandparents. Also, stepping back on the property makes me feel uneasy. When we were moving out, I was packing my things and something knocked over my cork board and I was frustrated as it broke it. I told whatever it was to leave me alone, but I was leaving. Then I heard something behind me clearly say, if you come back, I'll kill you. I don't want to take my chances with the paranormal. With a threat like that, I don't want to mess with it, especially as this was a voice that was very different from Luke's. It hissed, made me feel sick, and made the room very cold as well. Okay, so I was around 15 at the time. I was super into demons and the occult as a teen. My siblings and I were staying at my nana's house. It was in the middle of summer, so we had spent the day in the creek. That night, we went to my uncle's house. He lived in an old farmhouse on the property. She had to work the next day, so we went there to be noisy kids. He was dating some woman who had two kids that were around the same age as my brother and sister. At some point in the night, we went to Walmart to buy a shitload of snacks and hit the $1 DVD bin for some classic horror movies. We're all high on sugar and 90 bagel bites. Telling ghost stories, our horror movies sucked. At some point, I bring up the fact that I know how to make Ouija boards and use them to talk with spirits. My uncle, this 6'4", 250 pound bastard of a man, eggs us on. So I made a Ouija board out of a bagel bite box and magic markers. We use a shot glass for maybe Mississippi or Alabama on it. I just remember the Dixie flag on the side of it. Mistakes one and two. We didn't have a candle, so we used a disco ball. You know the ones that have a lot of coloured dots and they spin around. Not the mirror ball type. Us girls start circling the board with the glass inviting something to join us. A few moments pass, long enough for us all to get bored. Suddenly, the glass jerks to hello and our fingers all slip off. Everyone laughed and were told to quit messing around. My uncle just kind of laughs and asks for a name. The glass spells out Ross. Full disclosure, all of the events are true, but I don't remember its real name. I'm just guessing for the sake of storytelling, but I remember it was short. Only four or five letters and a classic men's name. My uncle fussed us, telling us to quit messing around, that Ross was the name of the guy who built the farm. Ross would also happen to be a distant relative. We didn't know that. I mean, sure, we could have heard the name in passing. We put our fingers back on the glass. The girl is too scared to keep going, but my sister and I do. We put our hands back on the glass and circle the board. Our hands get cold to the point my joints are starting to hurt. I also feel dread and the temperature in the room is dropping, despite only using a small window AC, and it's the middle of Kentucky summer. I ask if it's good or evil. It jerks to E before our fingers are forced off. Everyone is uneasy at this point. My uncle's girlfriend kinda starts to freak out and tells us to stop. I tell her we have to say goodbye. She ends up getting mad and going to bed. So like any teens, we keep going. My sister and I pick up the shot glass, making circles in the opposite direction. We tell Ross we're done talking and thanking him for his time. We all then do a small ritual claiming no evil and try to summon a new spirit. This time, 
asking for a good spirit. After circling some time, we eventually get another hello. When we ask this spirit what its name is, it spells out Ross. We get a little angry and tell Ross to leave. I know my voice was shaking when I told him we were scared and he was unwelcome. The disco ball starts spinning like someone has their hand on top. Only the bass is spinning slowly winding the cord until it unplugged itself. We all just kind of watch dumbfounded. My uncle immediately stands up and says it's time to go outside for a smoke break. There's a door in the living room that starts shaking like someone is pounding on it. That door is only accessible from the living room. A trailer was placed next to the house to give it extra rooms in the bathroom. So the door is blocked off on the side, whatever is trying to come through. We scramble out, my uncle first and me last. On my way out, something grabbed my ponytail. My sister said something pulled it straight up. While outside, we tried to burn the board. This was just cardboard that frozen food came in and a Sharpie marker. My uncle is actively trying, but it won't light or stay lit. He decides to douse it in gas and toss it in the burn barrel. It takes an uncomfortable amount of time to burn. I remember watching it after the initial whoosh from the gas. Goodbye was the last corner to burn. My nana had a couple of farm dogs. They were friendly enough to us, but were aggressive and hated strangers. These dogs were losing their minds barking at the house. After that, we were all a bit scared. Us kids go to my nana's house. Us girls sleep in the bed and the boys sleep on an air mattress on the floor. The girl ended up wetting the bed. At breakfast, we all talked about having nightmares. They were different, but we all agreed our dreams had fire. Mine was in a burning bed that I couldn't escape. My nana freaked out when she heard what she did. She called the priest and had holy water and oils within an hour. She took us to the creek and did a mock baptism with the oils and water while chewing us out. Then she took crosses to my uncle's house, putting them on both doors in his bathroom door. We went back to my nana's a lot. We'd see my uncle every time too, since he lived 300 feet from my nana. His house always felt cold and unwelcoming. Maybe four to six months pass. My nan is getting ready to feed all her animals and notices my uncle's house on fire. Luckily, he survived. His bedroom was the last to catch. The fire department took a long time to get there and the house was lost. I think they said it was a cigarette he dropped that started it all in the living room. First, I'd like to establish some context. I'm not exactly a believer in the paranormal, but I try to keep an open mind. Really, I kind of want to experience something that makes me believe, but until it happens, I remain agnostic on the subject. That isn't to say I haven't had some experiences that fall into the realm of the unknown, though. The house that I grew up in was built two years before I was born, so late 80s. My parents were the first occupants. The plot it was built on was just some northern New England farmland, bordering some woods. No Native American burial grounds or anything, as far as I know. The unexplainable experiences I had both could be explained as auditory hallucinations. If they were, the good lord did they sound real. I'll start with the more benign and less freaky of the two events. It was I was probably about 12 years old. Staying up on a weekend playing video games and watching Newgrounds cartoons on my dad's computer. It was probably around 10pm. I believe specifically I was playing Starcraft. And while I went about cheesing my opponents with Nidus Canals and Hydralisks, I was singing a song in my head. Kind of embarrassing, but I'm pretty sure it was Limp Biscuit. Anyway, I'm reciting the song in my head when suddenly I hear a young female voice very clearly saying, I know what you're singing. Like, I could hear the song in my head, but my ears actually heard this young woman's voice. It's not the voice of my mother or sister, totally unfamiliar. I immediately look around and start freaking the fuck out. My parents were asleep, my sister off to college. I looked around the house, even went outside to see if there were any signs someone was there. Nope. Nothing. 
I heard this voice clear as day and never found the source. The second instance was much more menacing. I can't remember the exact details, but the circumstances were similar. I believe this was a few years later. I was probably about 14 or 15. I believe my parents were away for one reason or another, and my sister's still off to college. So I'm home alone this time. Another late night of gaming, and I finally decide to go to sleep. I fall asleep, but wake up not long after to go pee. When I got back into my room, I started hearing the sound of heavy breathing. It started out somewhat faint, so I held my breath to try to hear it better and make sure it wasn't just me breathing weirdly without realising. It gradually, over about 20 seconds, gets louder and louder. I'm looking around the room, trying to figure out where it's coming from. While it gets so loud, it really sounds like someone is right behind me, and they're breathing deeply and with rage. It felt fucking terrifying, and it was loud. This went on for probably a minute or two before it eventually stopped scared the absolute shit out of me and felt very clearly malevolent, whatever it was. After a long car trip at night, I and two other friends decided to spend the night at my grandmother and grandfather's house because it was around 2am and we couldn't drive anymore. Since neither my grandmother or grandfather were home, we thought it fit perfectly and because it was halfway to our destination. For some reason, we all felt unusually happy during the whole evening. Everything felt easy and good. At that time in my life, it was unusual for me to feel good because it was a hard time in my life. I had very destructive life patterns marked by a criminal lifestyle. Now to the event. It was a crystal clear Swedish winter night with a beautiful night sky. So we decided to sit on their large terrace for a while and talk and look out over the big lake. After a while into the conversation, our eyes were drawn to the sky because as the sky began to change colour to a brighter blue colour, the sky became brighter and brighter in a very beautiful shade. Finally, an outline of a church window came up in the sky with an extremely beautiful blue harmonious colour. The most beautiful colour I've seen in my entire life. Now to the big one. At the point in the sky where the contour of a church window was located, there was a large contour of an angel that flew past in the church window itself. The figure in the window seemed to be wearing some kind of dress and it was huge. Me and my two friends froze and our body hair stood straight up. After we observed the phenomenon, we felt extreme love, happiness, euphoria and harmony. None of us really understood what was happening but we felt extremely happy until we buzzed a few hours later, around 3.30 a.m. It was the sickest thing I've been through in my 22 year long life. I hope someone else gets to experience what I did. I've become 100% more religious after the event. Today, I'm free from the destructive pattern of my life and I feel that this was the beginning of brighter times for me. Today, I'm a person who wants to help others. When we first heard of this trend, we saw it as a way to try something new. To explore the boring and strange neighbourhood in which I live, with the hope to see an unforgettable and creepy happening. What we saw, I'm sure, could definitely be described that way. It was dark, it was around 11pm. We were spent after trying to find something cool with the Randonauts app. We had tried to manifest something scary, an abandoned building or an entity but the randomly generated points would always lead us to the countryside, and even trying to reach them was impossible as they were private properties. After some hours, we decided to surrender, and just to walk around my house as we had never really explored those old streets, and we found a weird and chained gate that blocked the way to a huge, seemingly abandoned house. There was a couch in front of the door, on which a black cat was comfortably sitting and there was a dim light that came from a window that made it look as if there was someone inside. Near the couch, there were some objects from the 50s, like a basketball basket covered in rust. 
the atmosphere was spooky and there were bats flying around, but we decided to keep walking until we found something that looked like a dead end street. A street lamp started working at once, making three gates visible. The first gate was right at the end of the small road, the second one was on the left, and the third one, the most important one, was on the right. I saw another black cat behind the first gate, but I turned around, and after a little bit, I looked back at the gate. As soon as I did that, I literally jumped after seeing a black sheet on the ground, which was basically being dragged, but it quickly disappeared. I asked my friends to leave, as we had previously seen a weird shadow, who could have been someone, behind some bushes, and it was giving me anxiety. But we decided to stay and check behind the third gate. There was something strange. It was sitting against the wall, as if it was at rest, and it seemed like it was holding a huge stick, even though no hands were visible. Now that I think about it, it may have looked like the Grim Reaper's sickle. A little far from it there was an old chair, and a drawing resembling a face appeared right on the wall. It was smiling and it had eyes, a nose and a curved drawn line which represents a smiling mouth. There was some sort of noise close to it, on the same wall, and a house which was behind it had a five-pointed star on the balcony. After seeing this, I really felt as if we were in the wrong place. I started panicking and convinced everyone to leave. And we got back home safe, but still with many questions regarding what we saw. These questions had led us to go back to the creepy street some days later. We thought about going in there in the daylight, but somehow we ended there even later than 11pm, and we met a different scenery. A huge white van was resting in the exact same place where we had seen the hooded man, and the drawing on the wall wasn't there anymore. We still can't explain what we saw, and probably we never will but it's a mystery that will probably haunt us forever. Since I was a child, I always had some kind of perception. I often felt like someone was watching me, as if I wasn't alone in my house, or you know, just perceiving weird energies around me. I was little, so I didn't pay any attention to it. I never told it to my parents, and even if I did, would have been odd. Because the house in which I lived, and still live, where what I'm about to tell happened, was new. And it had no history of deaths or murders. When I was around 11, I used to sleep in the same room as my parents. Don't judge. <laughs> and basically my bed was attached to the opposite wall of theirs. So when I looked at the ceiling, I could see the corner where the walls met. One night, I randomly woke up from my sleep, shifting uncomfortably and feeling a huge sense of fear. I was uneasy as it was very late, past midnight. As soon as I opened my eyes, I saw the detailed silhouette of a girl, which was around my age at the time, or even younger, and she was basically floating in the exact corner in front of me. She wore an expensive looking dress from the 1800s, and she also had a hat in the same style, while her hair was in curls. I could only see the outlines of a figure, and they were white and bluish, and I felt as if I was about to die because of how scared I was. For the same reason I wanted to scream, but I couldn't, and only some seconds later I could run into my parents' bed. For many years I had been reassured, because I'd successfully convinced myself that it was a sleep paralysis experience, but two things made me realise that it probably wasn't. First of all, when I climbed in my parents' bed, I turned around for some seconds to check if it was still in the corner, and I can vividly remember that the mysterious girl was in fact still there. But the most important thing was, was much later discovered that the land on which the house was built previously belonged to a rich family from the 1800s, and they had a daughter who died very young. I'm still afraid sometimes because I still sleep in the same room without my parents. And I often feel as if someone sits on my bed as soon as I lay down. I can literally feel the mattress bending from an unknown weight, and I still feel something watching me when I'm by myself. Some say that while dreaming, we can travel without any time and space limitations. 
and we can happen to share a peculiar experience with someone with whom we have a strong and close connection, meeting them while being asleep. This is what happened to my mother and I. We always had a special relationship as we always talked about everything. I can say that she probably transmitted me her gift being able to have different perceptions related to the paranormal world. That's why we happened to meet in a dream more than once. And it was very scary. The first time it happened, it was nothing scary. We were just at the beach, so I'm not going to explain more. The second time though, we were in our living room. It looked like a normal dream at first, as we were just chatting about unimportant matters. But then I said something out loud which really stuck out. We must pay attention to children's ghosts. I remember seeing a woman's face in my dream after this sentence, right before waking up. During breakfast, I always tell her about what I dream, as it's always something scary or weird anyways. And while I started narrating, her facial expression changed a little bit after I started. She said that she had the same dream, chatting with me in the living room, but instead of hearing my weird and creepy phrase, she saw the woman's face and the one of a child from the 1930s. He had straight hair, set with a row to the side, and he didn't look mean. He just had the typical facial features and clothing of children of those years. She also felt a little pressure on her, right before some sort of grab on the arm, but she was still sleepy, so she brushed it off and fell back to sleep. While talking to each other about the experience, we felt as if someone was watching us, so we no longer brought it up. Thinking about it though, still haunts me. This story takes place in Texas in December 2018. Weeks leading up to this incident, my mom did notice a hand. The hand had a lot of fur and claws at the end of each finger. It looked like a mix between a human hand and a dog paw. My mom saw it was clawing slash scratching the window. She went back to sleep and didn't think too much of it, and there was a curtain at the window, so she didn't see anything else that night. A couple of nights later, I woke up randomly. When I woke up, I noticed something with thick fur. I rubbed my eyes to make sure of what I saw. I looked through the spaces of the curtain and saw a werewolf creature six to seven foot tall. I remember it looked like the head of a husky and the fur was thick. The color of this werewolf was dark gray, brown and red. The werewolf had pointy ears with some white on them and had ice blue color eyes. I was very intrigued by the werewolf. I didn't feel scared or threatened in any way. I felt the werewolf was curious and had muscles all over the body, had abs and was on its hind legs. It stood up like a human. I did feel I was hypnotized for some reason and I'm not sure if he saw me. I do say he because I felt it was a he, not a she. Hard to explain. I did feel the werewolf with blue eyes was coming back to see me again. I've never seen him again but yet I felt like I knew those eyes like I've seen them somewhere. I know it's strange. Like a week later, I woke up to the howls. In the area I live in, I don't usually hear coyotes or wolves. Then I checked my phone to see that it was 3.30 a.m. I thought it was an odd time to hear a howl so deep. The howls were so deep the ground felt it was shaking a little. Then I heard something horrible. I heard a poor dog being torn apart by giant werewolf beasts. There were at least four in a pack. They sounded big. The howls kept going. The poor dog kept crying and yelping as it was being eaten. I was too scared to look outside, but it didn't look that close, maybe a mile away. My mom heard the howling and a dog being ripped apart alive and the poor dog crying and yelping. My dad was in a deep sleep. My neighbours heard them too and my next door neighbour. My next door neighbours were young people who would drink at parties and go out late. So they were about to leave and open the door. And I heard them scream and one said go back inside. And I heard another shut the door and lock it up. I'm not sure what scared them but they don't usually get scared easily. I heard my other neighbour from downstairs talking on the phone saying crazy things happen late at night. He kept saying the stories you hear when you were young just aren't stories, they're real. He said he can't sleep at night. 
I don't live in the countryside. I live in a mall and stores nearby. There's some spaces between trees and some spaces of land, and I've seen a candle in the areas of the land with fences. Luckily, I've never seen any werewolves, and I've never seen coyotes in the area or any of that. I still hear howls from time to time, but I hear it from miles and miles away. It's weird. I do hear them from far away, I know. I just wanted to share this story because it's something I never expect to happen to those bloody screams from a poor dog. It's something I don't want to hear again. I've moved around the States, but I grew up in Hawaii mostly. So it's like, I do believe lots of different parts of Hawaii are very haunted and especially schools. My middle school would always feel like I'm being followed or even feel something or someone watching me. I'd never tell anyone or ask anyone if they felt the same. The girls locker room for PE, physical education, is always feeling something was wrong and no matter if all the lights were on, it would still feel dark. Every time I'd walk in, I'd want to leave the area. Just something about that locker room was off for me. I'd also heard about the cafeteria being haunted, that sometimes pots and pans would move on its own, but I had no idea if it was true or not. My high school years became worse with the high school I went to. Even before I went to that high school, at one night, I was with my mom out for a drive. I was at least 11. And I saw the bell tower from afar, and it was 10 p.m. And I looked at the tower, and I was 100% I saw a little girl, seven to nine maybe of age, and she was in a white dress and long black hair covering her face. It was so creepy. I wondered why there was a little girl at this time, especially at that tower. I thought maybe her parents were worried, but I brushed it off even though it didn't seem right. So years later, when I started school there, I learned that the tower is off limits for some reason and it's always been off limits for years and that door leading to the tower is chained up. I did hear some stories about a young girl who hanged herself at the tower. Another story was that she wanted to be alone and was reading a book and people were reporting her missing. When the people found her she was hung at the tower, her body lifeless. Another time, I was at my media class. My teacher would say she'd had lots of paranormal experience because she wouldn't have any other explanation for these happenings. She showed a video of a little child shoe print not going anywhere and it happened when the auditorium was being fixed and the construction workers put cement in the front and let it dry all night when the next day there was a footprint of a child. Everyone was clueless why only a child footprint of a shoe but nowhere it led. Another story my teacher would tell me was about a football coach who was walking to leave for the day and all of a sudden he felt something was wrong. So he turned around to look and there were lots of students looked like zombies and walking extremely slow for some reason. And he turned around again and no one was there. He freaked out and he left. It was around 5pm so from then on he doesn't stay past 5pm. He doesn't believe in ghosts or paranormal things but that afternoon scared him. One time it was my classmates, my teacher and me, I was in the class early. So there was a random sound, like something pop or broke. And it was sound the AC area, and it's a couple of feet off the ground, and there's windows in that area, but no explanation what happened or why. It sounded like that the AC didn't break or turn off. It was just odd. Also, the back door where the black room is for developing photos opens and closes randomly when no one is near it or in that room. One time, my teacher had to call the janitor to help her open the door because the door locked somehow. Another time, the bell rang for first lunch to end and go to class and the second lunch students to start. Then as I'm walking to class while looking at something in my science book, I accidentally bump into someone's shoulder and I looked and said, oh, I'm sorry. I looked to see who it was I'd bump into, but there was no one. It was weird, but I brushed it off. Then that night as I slept, I had a dream. I saw a tall six foot white guy dressed in green military clothes, formal. And I'd say maybe from 1960s area. And he explained that he doesn't understand why he's trapped in my school 
Or what happened? He said he tried to talk to people for years. But apparently, I was the only person to see him and feel him. So he was surprised when he bumped into my shoulder. I apologise. He told me this since I could see him and he knew and felt I'm a good person. He said he'd always protect me no matter what or where I am. When I woke up, I looked in the mirror and saw a heart-shaped bruise on my cheek. I never really told anyone what happened. I just kept to myself and my teacher said years and years ago, the school was a military hospital, so there was a military with injuries and wounds. And lots of them died. And her classroom is where the supposed morgue was located. Someone from the school had a project and they went late at night and went into the area where the cafeteria is in the video. You can see a big trash bin being dragged across the cafeteria from one side to another. And they couldn't get in since the doors were locked and chained up to the cafeteria. My other classmate went to a football game and after she was talking to her friends and she looked up at the girls restroom, she saw a shadow of a lady and the window open and closed the window on its own. Then lights in there turn off and on. I freaked her out that she didn't see anyone physically in the restroom. That she saw in the other class's windows, nothing. It was all closed and lights off, but that restroom freaked her out. She told her friend she had to go and left. Another thing happened to me. I was filming the talent show with my media group and I felt something or someone grabbing my butt behind the curtain. I said really stopped it and I looked and no one was near me. And so I kept filming when it happened again. I was getting upset. I said, seriously, stopped it. No one was near me to do that. And the people standing further away said it wasn't them. And they didn't see anyone there near me. So I don't know, just too odd, weird. I have more experience with ghosts and spirits. If others want to share their stories or experiences with me, I'd be happy to hear. My family is different. We were raised Christian, but a lot of the family did witchcraft. Not your typical witchcraft. Most of us either followed into it or put that aside. I believe in things that most don't, but I don't practice anything. My brother, on the other hand, went into it hard. With that being said, so I must have been like 23 or 24. I was living with my brother and grandma. My brother at the time would leave the house and not come back for days. He had a massive DVD collection. When I was bored, I would either pick his door or if the key was available, I would use that. On this day, the key was there. So I went in and grabbed a bunch of DVDs and locked the door because I didn't want him knowing I was in there. I watched like two movies, smoked some and then got paranoid. So I went to place the movies back in his room. I closed the door, locked the door. When I locked the door, I heard a sound and was like, what the fuck? So I unlocked the door and the door slammed into the closet doors. The way the room was, the door opens to the left. On the right of the door was his double door closet. So if the closet doors are open, he can't get out of the room. Being blazed, I thought maybe something fell in the closet. So I pushed one closet door closed and made my way in. I looked around and realized there was nothing. I was like, whatever, close the closet, exit the room, lock the door. I heard the same noise. Thinking I'm just being paranoid, I unlock the door and once again, the closet doors were open. I push one door closed and make my way in. Looking around, only this time, I felt the coldest shiver ever in my life. I was like, fuck that and I'm out. Exit the room, lock the door, and that's when I hear the closet door slam against the room door. Not gonna lie, it made me jump. I immediately ran to my grandma and asked if he was there. She replies, no. I was like, you sure? She was like, yep. So now I'm like, this motherfucking got playing with my emotions. I unlocked the door, closed the closet door and went in. I'm like, bruh, stop playing with me. I know you're in here. Nothing. I start looking around. I look under the bed. And so I'm not scared if he jumps out. I yell, ha, muffa. There was nothing. I look behind the bed, ha, nothing. Behind the curtains, nothing. 
I'm like, well, this motherfucker in the closet. I open the closet door. Ha! Huh? Nothing. I move the clothes around. Nothing. I'm now convinced I'm lit, and it's just my imagination. I repeat the process. This time I didn't lock the door. I ran to my Jima, made her out to get out of bed, and took her to this room. I tell her to listen. I lock the door, and the closet doors fly open, slamming against the room door. She's like, what was that? I told her and explained what was happening. She's like, well, he's in there. I push the closet door closed, take her in, and show her the room. She's like, something must have put pressure on the door. We exit the room, I lock it, and it happens again. I'm like, she turns, slaps me in the face, and says, keep that kind of shit to yourself, and walks away. I push the closet closed, go in. I'm like, whatever you are, you're not welcomed here. I exit the door, lock the door. This time I hear one closet door open. Curious, I open the door. The closet door furthest from the room door was open. I close it, and that's when his lights turn off. Mind you, this whole time, the lights were on. That scared the bejesus out of me. I turn them on, exit, lock the door. I hear it again. My dumb lit ass goes to look. Closet doors are open. Lights off, I push in, close the closet doors and look in. The room was a lot darker. Almost like you couldn't see anything even with the light coming from the hall. I turn on the light and run out scared shitless. I leave the door unlocked. Around 11 p.m. my brother comes home. I rush to him and I'm like, you want to see something creepy? He looks at me with this pale face and says no. I'm like, well, you're gonna anyway. I take him to his room and he's like, why is the key in the lock? I come clean and tell him the truth. I tell him to lock the door. He looks at me and says, I don't want to. I squint my eyes now knowing he knows something. He makes a big fuss but locks the door. We both hear that shit and he starts spilling the beans. He's like some voodoo guy he knows gave him an original Ouija board. He's like, since he got it, he was having nightmares and hearing things. So we left the house for days. I'm like, so you leave it here and don't say shit? He's like, I thought it was in my head. He took it and I thought he left with it. Instead, this motherfucker puts it in another closet that has a skeleton key lock. Don't say shit. Leave the house for another five days. He comes home and spends like three days in the house. For those three days, everyone is hearing a doorknob jiggling, but we don't know where it's coming from. I ask him, yo, you got rid of that shit, right? He turns super slow and says with this stupid look, no, I put it in the small closet. When he says that, we hear the doorknob jiggle harder. So we go to the closet and you can see the doorknob moving. The thing with that closet is that there is no inside doorknob. I'd like to go in there and get rid of it. This is like I'm scared. What if it tries to eat me or take my soul? I'm like, well, if that's your fate, it is what it is. He takes it back to the old voodoo guy. That's when the old voodoo guy tells him that he found that Ouija board in the Amityville house in the late 70s, early 80s. After that day, my brother stopped doing his weird stuff and started going to church. Till this day, every time I talk about it, I feel cold shivers and get goosebumps. So I know people talk about deja vu a lot, and people love to explain it away with science, like your brain is tricking you because, insert logical reason here. You just feel like this scenario has happened before, but it hasn't actually happened yet. I do agree with this to an extent. All of my deja vus initially occur in my dreams when I'm fully asleep and unconscious. When it happens again in reality, I always stop and think about it. But I dismiss it because it most likely is just my mind, recreating a sense of familiarity. I always try to find simple, logical reasons for unexplained things, because not everything strange has to be paranormal. However, I had this one deja vu moment where I can't explain. It's nothing spooky, just strange. Hear me out. I was 14 to 15 at the time. I was visiting my sister's boyfriend family in their vacation home. 
I was having a lot of trouble sleeping at the time because it was just really hot, humid, and I was uncomfortable as hell. I would only get like three hours of sleep a night and I'd never go into a deep sleep. One morning I woke up, but I didn't fully wake up. My eyes were half open and I was just staring at the wall in front of me, but it felt like I was in a trance. My brain wasn't registering that I was unconscious. I was in a state between being asleep and awake. I can't explain it well, and that's the first and last time that's happened to me. I imagine this is what the beginning of lucid dreaming feels like, if I had the ability to lucid dream. So I'm staring at the wall and a picture of a little girl pops up in front of me, just floating on the blank space of the wall. I've never seen this little girl before in my life. She's white, has blonde hair, is wearing a black and red uniform, black blazer with buttons on top, red skirt on bottom, and has a star hairpin in her hair. She has a super distinct red birthmark on the left side of her face. In my dream, I'm confused because I've never seen this girl before and I'm wondering who she is. After, I fully wake up and I actively think about what I just dreamed about. I remember everything and I write down what she looks like on the notepad in my phone, jotting down everything I mentioned in this post in case I forgot. The whole day I'm thinking about her. Later that night, my sister's boyfriend's daughter, who's the same age as me, is showing me her school yearbook. She flips through several pages and I see that little girl's picture. That same exact picture I saw that morning in my dream. The red and black uniform is her school uniform and she's in the second grade. The hairpin and the birthmark are all there. I'm super freaked out and I start to tell her about it. She's obviously very confused and skeptical, so I show her the notepad on my phone and she's like, how do you know her? I said I don't, and I saw her in my dream. So understandably, she's creeped out, doesn't believe me, and I'm very sure she thinks I'm a weirdo. Me and a couple of my friends decided to go out and eat dinner together to celebrate the end of term one. I'm from Australia. My buddy wanted to use the bathroom and asked if I could come in case anything happened. I said sure, and we went outside of the restaurant to the bathroom. I waited outside while he went in to do his business. I was standing there waiting for what seemed like a while, so I decided to go inside the bathroom and see what was the hold up. However, when I went in, the bathroom was completely empty. There was nobody in sight. I went and checked all the stalls and urinals. There's one stall and three urinals in that bathroom and there was nobody to be seen. I thought that maybe he had somehow gone out without letting me know. So I decided to call him and ask him why he did that. He didn't pick up. I began walking back to the restaurant. Then I looked back and saw him exiting the bathroom. I was so confused and asked him how he pulled it off. He was very confused about what I was talking about and said I must have been tripping. We proceeded to have a long discussion and he insisted he was peeing in the urinal and that I must have gone into the women's bathroom. I denied this and said it definitely went past urinals and went into the men's bathroom. We went back to the restaurant and my buddy told everyone I must have been doing drugs and about what just happened. There was no way he or I could have been in the women's bathroom as I could hear women chatting in there and if either of us went in, we would have been found out and kicked out. There are no hiding spots in the bathroom. I literally have no clue what happened. When I was younger, around 12, my dad moved into a house. Now this house always gives me weird vibes. I constantly felt like I was being watched. I couldn't sleep with my door open or without the TV on. Now this is going to be two separate stories put into one. The first experience I had was around 2am. I was in the living room watching TV. It was the weekend, so I was living up to my bedtime. Now the layout of my house was slightly weird and the living room was dead centre in the house. Surrounded by dark hallways and rooms. I started hearing noises in the kitchen but thought nothing of it because we had dogs. 
A couple minutes go by and I can faintly hear my parents in their bedroom doing stuff. Gross, I know. They were being loud, so I went to turn to look in the direction of their room. I was sitting with my back to the hallway and as I'm turning clear as day, I hear a child's voice in my ear say, don't turn around. I froze in place, absolutely paralyzed with fear. Then I felt a tug on my hair. I promptly jumped up and turned on every light in my house as fast as I could. I didn't hear anything for the rest of the night, but needless to say, I didn't go to sleep until the sun was up. Fast forward to a couple months later. It's Christmas Eve. Me and my siblings were sent to bed to prepare for Santa to drop the presents off. It was around midnight and I was laying in bed watching TV. I was too excited about presents to sleep. I saw something else with the corner of my eye and looked over at my closed door. As I looked over, I saw a bright blue mist figure float through my door. It was glowing, but not enough to light up my room. I watched as it floated from my door and through my closed closet door. I was once again absolutely shocked. I covered up my head with the blanket for a couple minutes until I felt better. I then laid on my side facing the other side of my bed. The blanket took the shape of someone lying next to me. I laid there and watched as the blanket moved as if someone was breathing. This went on for a couple minutes and then suddenly the blanket laid flat on the bed again. This all happened 12 years ago and at the time I told myself I was just imagining things. However, the older I got, the more I'm convinced that something was up with that house. When I talked to my dad about it, he told me some stories they had about hearing a little boy when no one was there. I've done research on the house and never found anything. However, as we moved out, we found handprints made in the concrete on the driveway. Two sets of child's handprints with 1978 written underneath. 